silly bitches. Check it. Bought twice. Dog mice. Saw price and dog twice and bought price. Dog flies and all tights and dog tights. Yo, check it one more time. Bought twice. Dog mice. Saw price and shot twice and dog tights. Dog flies and all tights and small price. Your life's a lie. Bought twice. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to watch the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look. It's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain spark, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners. They looking confident, it's all good, I got them. Yeah, we spot the imposters. Now drop me through radio revolutionaries and levels on top of them. Level and malevolence never benefits unless it's ever like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bonkers, I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Fuck yeah, here. you silly son. bitches. Check it. Walk twice. Dog mice. Saw a price and dog twice and bought price. Dog flies and all tights and dog tights. Yo, check it one more time. Walk twice. Dog mice. Saw a price and shot twice and dog tights. Dog flies and all tights and small price. Your life's a lie. Walk twice. Dog mice. Shot twice and shot twice and dog tights. Dog flies and all tights. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to watch the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look. It's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain spark, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners. They looking confident, so good I got them. Yeah, we spot the imposters. Now drop me through radio revolutionaries and levels on top of them. Level and malevolence never benefits unless it's ever like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bonkers, I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Fuck out yeah, here, you silly son. bitches. Check it. Walk twice. Dog mice. Saw a price and dog twice and bought price. Dog flies and all tights and dog tights. Yo, check it one more time. Walk twice. Dog mice. Saw a price and shot twice and bought price. Bark twice, dog mice, shark lights, shark twice and bark vice. Dark lies and all dice, it's more dice. Fucking shell. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to watch the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look, it's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain spark, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident, it's all good, I got them. Yeah, now we spot the imposters. Now drop me through radio revolutionaries, 10 levels on top of them. Level and malevolence never benefits, unless it's ever like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bonkers, I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Fuck out of here, you silly son. bitches. Check it. Walk twice. Dog mice. Saw price and dog twice and bought price. Dog flies and all tights and dog tights. Yo, check it one more time. Walk twice. Dog mice. Saw price and shot twice and bought price. Dog flies and all tights and small price. Your life. Bark twice, dog mice, shark lights, shark twice and bark vice. Dark lies and all dice, it's more dice. Fucking shell. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to watch the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look, it's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain spark, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident, it's all good, I got them. Yeah, now we spot the imposter. Now drop me through radio revolutionaries, 10 levels on top of them. Level and malevolence never benefits, unless it's ever like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. 
You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bomb cause I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Yeah, you silly bitches. Check it. Bark twice. Dog mice. Dog price is dog twice. Dog price. Dog lies and all tights. It's dog tights. Yo, check it one more time. Bark twice. Dog mice. Dog price is shot twice. It's dog price. Dog lies and all tights. It's small price. Your life. Bark twice, dark mice, shark lights, shark twice, and bark vice. Dark lies and no dice, it's more dice. Fucking shell. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to walk the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look. It's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain spark, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident. It's all good, I got them. Yeah, now we spot the imposters. Now drop me through radio revolutionaries, 10 levels on top of them. Never in malevolence, never benefits. Unless it's ever like the Kennedys, and LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bomb cause I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Yeah, you silly bitches. Check it. Bark twice. Dog mice. Dog mice. Dog twice. And bark twice. Dog flies and all tights. It's dog tights. Yo, check it one more time. Bark twice. Dog mice. Dog mice. It's shot twice. It's dog mice. Dog flies and all tights. It's small mice. Your life's a lie. Bark twice. Dog mice. Shark lights, shark twice, and bark bites. Dark lies and all dice, it's more bites. Fucking shell. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to walk the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look, it's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain spark, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident, it's all good, I got them. Yeah, now we spot the imposter. Now drop me from radio revolutionaries, 10 levels on top of them. Level in malevolence, never benefits, unless it's ever like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bomb cause I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Yeah, you silly bitches. Check it. Bark twice. Dog mice. Dog mice. Dog twice. And bark twice. Dog flies and all tights. It's dog tights. Yo, check it one more time. Bark twice. Dog mice. Dog mice. It's shot twice. It's dog mice. Dog flies and all tights. It's small mice. Your life. Bark twice, dark mice, shark lights, shark twice, and bark vice. Dark lies and all dice, it's more dice. Fucking shell. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to walk the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look, it's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain spark, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident, it's all good, I got them. Yeah, now we spot the imposters. Now drop me from radio revolutionaries, 10 levels on top of them. Level in malevolence, never benefits, unless it's ever like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bomb cause I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Yeah, you silly bitches. Check it. Bark twice. Dark mice. Dark mice. Dark twice. And bark twice. Dark lies and all tights. It's dark tights. Yo, check it one more time. Bark twice. Dark mice. Dark mice. It's shark twice. It's dark mice. Dark lies and all tights. It's more tights. Your life's a lie. Bark twice, dark mice, shark lights, shark twice, and bark vice. Dark lies and all dice, it's more dice. Fucking shell. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to walk the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look, it's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain spark, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident, it's all good, I got them. Yeah, we spot the imposter.
I drop me through radio revolutionaries and levels on top of them. Level and malevolence never benefits unless it's ever like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bonkers, I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Fuck out yeah, here, you silly son. bitches. Check it. Bar twice. Dog mics. Short prices. Dog twice. And bar twice. Dog flies and all tights. It's dog tights. Yo, check it one more time. Bar twice. Dog mics. Short prices. Short twice. It's dog tights. Dog flies and all tights. It's more price. Your life's a lie. Bark twice, dark mice, shark lights, shark twice, and bark vice. Dark lies and all dice, it's more dice. Fucking shell. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to watch the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look. It's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain sparked, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident. It's all good, I got them. Yeah, now we spot the imposters. Now drop me through radio revolutionaries, 10 levels on top of them. Level and malevolence never benefits unless it's ever like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bonkers, I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Fuck out of here, you silly son. bitches. Check it. Bark twice. Dog mics. Short price and dog twice and bark price. Dog flies and all tights. It's dog tights. Yo, check it one more time. Bark twice. Dog mics. Short price and short twice and bark price. Dog flies and all tights. It's more price. Your life's a lie. Bark twice. Dog mics. Short lights. Short twice and bark price. Dark lies and all dice, it's more dice, fucking shell. Yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook, slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to walk the ride of truth, some are forever unfortunate, never to look, it's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain sparked, Lenny Posner, versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident, it's all good, I got them, yeah, now we spot the imposters. Now drop me through radio revolutionaries, 10 levels on top of them, level in my Never benefits unless it's ever like the Kennedys And LBJ's the end of it You better get ready for this shit Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one It's bonkers, I'm on one All you can do is pause to me Fuck out of here, son Fuck out of here, you silly bitches Check it Bark twice, dog mics Short price and dog twice and bark price Dog flies and all tights It's dog tights Yo, check it one more time Bark twice Dark mice, sharp bites, you shot twice, it's dark bites. Dark lies and all ice, it's more bites, your life's a lie. Bark twice, dark mice, shark lights, you shot twice, it's dark bites. Dark lies and all ice, it's more bites. Fucking shell, yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to walk the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look, it's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain sparked, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident, it's all good, I got them. Yeah, now we spot the imposter. Now drop me through radio revolutionaries, 10 levels on top of them. Level and malevolence never benefits, unless it's ever like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. Your cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bonkers, I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Fuck out of here, you silly bitches. Check it. Bark twice. Dark mice. Short price and dark twice and bark price. Dark lies and all tights. It's dark tights. Yo, check it one more time. Bark twice. Dark mice. Short price and short twice and bark price. Dark lies and all tights. It's more price. Your life a lie. Bark twice, dark mice, shark lights, shark twice, and bark vice. Dark lies and no dice, it's more dice. Fucking shell, yo, we need to talk about Sandy Hook. Slow the flow of info so shit ain't never mistook. We need to walk the ride of truth. Some are forever unfortunate, never to look, it's not my problem. Robbie Parker, got my brain sparked, Lenny Posner. Versus a bunch of my partners, they looking confident, it's 
it's all good, I got them. Yeah, now we spot the imposter. Now drop me from radio revolutionaries to levels on top of them. Level and malevolence never benefits. And that's the seven's like the Kennedys. And LBJ's the end of it. You better get ready for this shit. You cocksuckers fucking with the wrong one. It's bonk cause I'm on one. All you can do is pause to me. Fuck out of here, son. Fuck out of here, yeah, you silly son. bitches. Check it. Walk twice. And I believe we're live. I do declare. Yeah, it didn't go to YouTube. I could stop it and restart it. All right. Okay, guys, this is uh, basically uh, a test broadcast here. We're testing out the uh, system, seeing how we go and how we do. Um, right now we're bringing in, I'm bringing in a couple of camera feeds from here, from my location here in sunny Kelowna, usually sunny anyway. Um, and we got Southern Sentinel here all the way from the land down under. And uh, this is uh, the edge of the apocalypse. And uh, what do you got to say there, Mr. Sentinel? I am just looking. I want to see. I don't know if your audio is being channeled. Can you hear yourself on Twitch? There's going to be a delay. I don't think so. Okay, good. Okay, I had a feeling. I had a feeling that wasn't confident there. So I'm just going to take the uh, main out and do what we did yesterday. I'm just going to run it into the USB mixer. USB mixer. And that should help. Okay, go ahead. Say stuff. No. Go ahead. Say stuff. No. Go ahead. Say stuff. Testing, no. testing. Go ahead. Say stuff. Testing, no. testing. What's well, horrible? Stuff. Yeah, that's not big Yeah, that's that's that was a bad idea. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, there's something definitely going on with the audio. Oops. So we're just doing some trial and error. We will be back very shortly. Um, if, if we want to stop this and get the audio fixed up, um, hopefully we can get all that. No, it, it 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 was it was causing a feedback loop. I had to cut that out because I was taking my main audio output, but what it was doing was running it back through the desktop. So, so hang on a second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pipe your audio from uh, an auxiliary. So I just got to pull up uh, the uh, pulse control here. Let's see here. Uh, just start staying. Something I just want to see what what. what what trips a meter? Go ahead. Okay, so there's that one there. Okay, so hang on. That's the Skype output. That's going to go to auxiliary output two. And I'm going to take auxiliary two. And I'm going to bring that. Whoopsie daisies. I'm going to bring that one 
into my microphone. That's what we did yesterday. I couldn't. Uh, I knew it was one of those two. It wasn't the main. That would have been silly. Okay, go ahead. Say something. So yeah, um, what I want to say is that I've got some very important information that was given to me after the previous forecast tonight. Um, it got to do with the hotel quarantine situation in Victoria, Australia, that the Department of Health of Victoria has been charged with 51 breaches of breaching the Occupation Health and Safety Act. Jeez. So we'll go through that, we'll go through that yeah. once everything is set up. Um, I also got a message here on... Um, On Twitch, if video is buffing, use low latency um, toggle under the advanced menu in settings to disable low latency mode. So I don't know what that requires. Um, it all depends if it's lagging, but I don't see it's lagging on my end. What's going on there? Uh, just a message on Twitch. If video is, is video buffering on Twitch, Use the low latency toggle under the advanced menu in settings to disable low latency mode. Well, I, I don't think it. I don't think it's lagging at all. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, let, I'll check the other feeds too. On uh, on, uh, I don't think uh, BeerTube accepted it either. And if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm talking about oh. BeerTube.ch. Actually, it's BeerTube.epgn.ch. I apologize. Um, yeah. it's, uh, a decentralized, uh, YouTube styled environment where you can do all the kinds of video sharing and, uh, live shows and other things. And, uh, uh, it's not with the big guys, you know, it's good. That's true. But the thing is when it comes to technology like this, I'm, I'm like a little freaking midget compared to other people that know technology inside out. I mean, my job like when I was on radio, was press one button, make sure the microphone's working, and let all the other people in the studio do the job. Yeah, you know what's funny is I come from the old school too. Uh, in in that in that fashion, I mean, I remember lugging all the gear, setting up all the bins, setting all the uh, mixing gear up, and running the cables one connection at a time. Just you know what I mean? Like, I remember those old school days, man. I mean, gaffer tape, man. Only certain people know what that, that term is. <laughs> no, but on a serious note, everything that I see on the screen on what we're using for the call here, I'm seeing it on Twitch. I'm seeing the logo. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing me. I see the banner. Everything seems to be working. It just we want to make sure that the volume is working, that it's it's not lagging, but it looks like everything is working as far as I can see. I mean, yeah. let me just turn the volume up very quickly on, on Twitch. Working as far as I can see. I mean, yeah. let me just turn There you go. It's working. So it might be a delay, um, like a, a five to seven second delay from what I say here to on, on our call to being broadcast on Twitch, so it is, but they, it is yeah, they should notice any any any, any difference. Like they're they're kind of hearing the end result anyway, right? So they shouldn't. We're the only ones who notice that. But yeah. uh, um, I'm looking at it on my Twitch channel. Uh, if you wanted to know, it's uh, epgn underscore media, and uh, uh, I'm watching it right now. Um, I'm not listening to it, or else you'd be listening to it too. But. Uh, it's looking just fine. I don't see any hiccups or breaks or nothing. Let me go check the uh, preview over uh, on the YouTube live stream. Um, yeah, the preview window is looking pretty fluid. I don't know about the. Uh, I don't know about the actual page. I don't want to go there and I want to stay on the screen here uh, for that. But uh, if you guys are wondering what we're doing, we're actually uh, we've gone and taken a, a server, um, a Linode server. And I've basically gone and used Nginx in a fashion that doesn't serve up web pages so much. What it does is it actually acts as a as an RTMP stream uh, repeater. So I've basically I'm pulling in the stream from uh, from my OBS source here, 
and then I'm rebroadcasting it out. I'm sending it to two of his channels. I'm also sending it to uh, my Twitch, to my BeerTube channel, um, which is not working right now, which I'm going to check into that. But it's also being streamed to the website, epgn.ch and radio.epgn.ch. Um, I have a couple of sound settings I got to uh, change, and I can also broadcast it to uh, the IceCast server over at radio.epgn.ch. Anyway, um, that's the tech behind it. That's what we're doing, and uh, just kind of uh, doing things in an experimental state. I'm, you know, just kind of writing the so software as I go. To be honest with you, and uh, oh, if we're doing this with what we got. I figured, you know what, I might as well see what we have, see how it can work, and see what we can do with it. And uh, and that's what this is uh, all about tonight. And while we're doing that, we might as well feed you guys some information that you may or may not be privy to. But either way, it's still uh, good to get a little bit of uh, knowledge into that cranium of yours. Um, and that's what we're doing tonight here. And we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of things. It's kind of a part two to yesterday's broadcast because um, yesterday's didn't go so well. And uh, what, we're, uh, what we were on about was uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the rollout of pharmaceutical, uh, you know, uh, more or less... Uh, agreements made between nations uh, on, on on how to uh, support each other in the pharmaceutical sectors of uh, industry. Anyway, um, without any further ado, uh, Southern Sentinel, we're here. Uh, Where do you want to kick it off? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to kick it off with this statement. Um, I want to say thanks to everybody that's been watching Southern Truth on Twitch for the last month and a half. Um, you guys, I'll say it bluntly, you guys are bloody legends. You guys want to be informed. You guys want to be educated. And most importantly, you want entertainment that the mainstream media will not report on. And from last week alone, the numbers just went through the roof. Now, I'm not looking to be famous. I'm not looking to get popular. You are the people that come across and look at it and watch it and voice your opinion in the chat rooms and the comments that I've been receiving, Rob, in the last week from many peoples around the world is just phenomenal because they saw what happened on the streets of Melbourne, Victoria, Australia last week with the construction worker protests and the police firing rubber bullets and so forth. And I was out on the protest on this past Saturday. Seeing the people reactions on social media and all the messages, all the support, um, it's just, it's heartwarming, you know, and the problem is here in Australia, we don't have enough radio like this to be able to speak out because we, if you speak against a certain narrative, what the politicians say or what the mainstream media say, they'll just shut you down. I'm looking for freedom of press, freedom of expression, opinion, all that. And if people want to put their debate in on what we present, I'll let them come in and everybody can have a voice. I'm not there to censorship anyone. I'm not there to call you names or call you anything. Most importantly, we, we just want people to be critical thinkers, not conspiracy theories, but con we want people to be critical thinkers. And I don't, I don't think the word conspiracy theory should be in anybody's vocabulary. That's a made up thing. The conspiracy theory word came when you start to question a certain narrative or a certain um, an event that goes against the ma the narrative what's being reported. Yeah, that's when. Conspiracy and, it, and even though it's a podcast in itself, uh, the conspiracy theory term was actually uh, it was invented by the CIA, which exactly is right. which exactly. which which is ironic in its own sense. But yeah, Operation Mockingbird and Operation, um, yeah, you know, I think Paperclip, but. Operation Paperclip, that was more of uh, mind control. Oh, well, the, no, Paperclip was the, uh, that was, the, they, they grabbed up all the scientists after World War II, all the Nazi scientists, and uh, and they exactly. rounded up yeah. half of them at least, and then they created NASA, basically. Exactly right. So um, a couple of weeks ago, 
maybe a month ago, Rob um, introduced himself to myself and my other co-hosts like Eric, um, Patrick Boone and Billy Grant. We all had a show together and Rob here introduced himself. He laid it out on the table and I, was, I wasn't um, bored for this. I was just won over because here's a guy in Canada does the things that I've always dreamed about. I've been looking to get on radio. I've been looking to, to be able to express what I see here in Australia to a larger audience. Now, here in Australia, it's very minimal compared to, say, America and Canada when it comes to podcasting or the online radio, so forth. It's very, very limited here. The only way that people can do it is Twitch, YouTube, and so forth. What I like to do was to bring my other side, which many people may not be aware, is the music business. I've, I've interviewed bands. I've, I've, I've um, done reviews. I get promo work before the albums get out. As a matter of fact, yesterday I was received the new Ministry album it's a promo. It hasn't been released yet. I've just received it. So um, my thing I said to Rob was that I want to bring some of my music background into my things that I talk about. However, I want to make a point clear. Some of the bands that I do follow, some of the bands that I have interviewed are going along with the, with the narrative that it's been played out in the entire world due to the pandemic. And it puts a sour pill in the back of my throat because of the segregation thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I have a hard time to follow. And most of these bands are supported by big touring companies, which the touring companies seem to be supporting and funding big pharma. And this is where we're going to go through the second part of what we thought about last night, the Pharmaceutical Act, where they changed everything around about 2015. Yeah. Just, uh, it's around the time when the TPP was announced for the, the five eyes or whatever you want to call it of the world. And um, when you say other corporate bodies like tour, major, major touring companies that support major, major big bands and artists, they're the ones that are shoving down people's throats that you need to be this or that just to go and see them. Yeah, and that's right. Yeah. Think when I do want to bring my music along, it's going to be the people that actually stand for the freedom of choice. Yeah. And we're going, we're going to have a lot of music played and, uh, and I want to introduce people to some new bands that are coming out of Australia that many people haven't heard. And also many new bands that I know from Canada that many Canadian people haven't heard just yet. So hmm. it's a, to um, expo um, get them a bit of exposure to the wider audience as well. And there will be a time where I'll probably get them on the show to have an interview talk about their background and so forth and it's an open field here man that's what we're going to do well that's good uh, you know it, it's i guess it's kind of a, a coincidence or you know call it that or uh, synchronicity i don't know but uh it just so happens that everything i've been working on is just finally starting to come together i'm able to kind of pull it in and like reel it all in everything started off with these little smaller projects and the end didn't even seem like it was in sight, man. Like, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just proud to be here. I'm, I'm glad to have a, a good little crew starting to kind of formulate and, and, and percolate. We also got, uh, on EPGN radio, um, which is, uh, it's separate from the, the, the video stream right now, but we got, uh, Sean, uh, Sean McGuire from Ireland. Uh, and, uh, he's a, He's an amazing guy. He's been on. He's been doing his uh, out of the bag show weekly for about six years. Like he's he's not stopped. He's switched network to network in the last couple of years because of instabilities. But uh, he's he's now he's with EPGN, and uh, you can also catch him on. Uh, I think it's uh, PSR 
uh, radio. But uh, that that aside, um, yeah, it's 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 kind of cool because everybody's been kind of wanting a new uh, a new network, a new platform, and uh, I think network is a great selection of words actually it's a good description because it's what i want to kind of create um a lot of the stuff that i'm using is all open source it's uh uh with a little bit of uh you know with a little little bit of training and in, in, in things like using the command line you know it's uh it, it's it's not for everybody it's a little bit of coding here and there but you can run your own servers and it's not that much like you know um i mean it's a lot if you don't have any money and I don't have any money and it's just, yeah, I'm glad I have a business partner and me and her, we kind of split things down the middle. So all of my bills are pretty much my business bills, which are the server. And, uh, if I can do it, anybody with a job can pull this off. You know what I mean? Like, frankly, anybody with a job can do this. So, um, and, and I'll show you how, because over the course of the next couple of weeks, um, I'm going to be working on some on, uh, I'm going to be doing some live streams, showing people how this stuff works, uh, setting up servers, setting up virtual machines, uh, all kinds of other stuff. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what all of this is about. Um, you know, if it's going to be a first real good official video, I might as well say what the fuck we do. So, <laughs> but I digress. Um, yeah. So where do we go from here? Yeah, I've got a message in Twitch. Um, Santris, uh, he is an awesome bloke. And I want to say thank you. He says this, um, nice job, guys. Make a move sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Santris. Thank you Thanks, very buddy. much for that. That's good. Thank that's you. good. If there's anything you guys notice that, uh, A, uh, you, you, that we didn't notice anything quirky and odd, please let us know. Bandwidth issues and, and stuttering. Like, if I don't see it at, at this end, I'll probably already be aware of it but i mean if it's something else like sounds not coming through from something i'm playing you know or he's not coming through or i'm not coming through by all means um i will be integrating the chat from radio.epgn or actually sorry live.radio.epgn.ch that uh chat will be integrated here in my obs i think i have it pulled up but you have to kind of be over at the uh uh live website right now but here's the thing is i'm going to be writing some bots that'll actually send the messages out from there to the various different other networks so it'll be interesting it'll be good it'll be cool but one step at a time we got to crawl before we get up and walk right so yeah so um guys um rob is, is going to teach me the ropes as well he's going to set me up and whatnot i've got to do things behind the scenes too but what you're going to see, guys, there will be a weekly show, as always, um, not just on EPGen Radio Online. It's going to be streamed here on Twitch. And probably, if we can get it working properly, it will go on YouTube too and maybe Facebook as well. But um, it depends how we're going to do this. Um, I know there's going to be some boundaries, there's going to be some hiccups along the way, but... Rob's going to teach me the ropes, uh, how to set it all up. And what you see right now on Twitch, um, I'm seeing yours, um, Twitch as well, um, Rob, and mine. It's coming across so beautiful. You've done an awesome job over the, the course that I've known you. And it, it's going to get bigger, man. I'm, I do have big props on this, that this will, will get bigger as we go forward from here. And most importantly, with the guest panel that I have, like Billy Grant, we had him on earlier tonight. He's an awesome guy. He's got so much knowledge, so much wisdom. He's going to be joining um, a few shows. Eric Spitfire Wilkinson, another great truth seeker as well. well you should a, send uh, Darian. Uh, the, you should get him in on the uh, Skype call. Yeah. And uh, oh, you want Damien in tonight? Damien, that's it. Yeah, sure. Might as well. He's waiting for. He's waiting to get a link. He'll be sitting up all night waiting. <laughs> <laughs> well, he might have gone to sleep. Well, let me just see if oh, Damien's yeah. still up. Um, I don't see him on Twitter. We were uh, we were off to a late start. I mean, I was just making sure I had as many of the eyes dotted and as many of the T's crossed as I could get. You know. I had Damien in. Um, gone to bed. It's pretty. It's pretty early in the morning over there um, yeah. in South Carolina. But if Damien is up, he probably will join. But if not, 
Oh, oh he's actually it's it's probably one or two in South Carolina, I think. I think I think on Pacific time or on Mountain Time. I can't remember. I always kind of get it. Uh, yeah, South Carolina eats of Santa Claus. Oh, it's Eastern time. <clears throat> oh, okay. Well, that's three hours from here, so it's like four in the morning. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same as Michigan as well. They want eat some standard time. Yeah. But then you go a little bit inwardly. You got the mountain, central mountain time, and then you got the Pacific. Yeah, I'm it's from like, the east. I'm I'm from the east, but I'm a trader. I'm uh, I'm now Western. You know. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's four eight uh oh, three eight it's four eight m Eastern Standard Time and three eight m Michigan Central Standard Time. Two eight m in Denver. And that means it's 1 a.m. in L.A. That's right. <laughs> hey, guys, I missed being in Canada. I went to Canada in 2002 for six months. The only thing I don't miss is the immigration department and the, and the government that treated me like a piece of dirt. Yeah, now, here's the thing. Here, here in Australia, if you get done for speeding or like speeding in, in your car, if you get a speeding ticket, or if you get a DUI, driving on the influence of drugs and alcohol, you are banned from Canada for 10 years, period. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what's funny is that in Canada, if you get caught with any kind of a weapons a weapons charge or a drug charge of any kind, you're instantly banned from the U.S. Like, you cannot cross the border. And, uh, yeah. I think you can still travel. I think they still... I think you can still travel. I mean... I, not obviously, not if you're like you know on a parole or something, but yeah. <laughs> it's... That's the thing. Um, I when I was in Canada, I met a guy who came from Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and this was at the airport. And we're coming back from. I was coming back to Australia. Now, check this out. He had a gold credit card. It had four and a half thousand dollars on the credit card. It was only supposed to stay in Canada for three weeks. The immigration department decided to deport him back to Australia. I don't know why. Maybe because he looked Middle Eastern, mm. but he wasn't Middle Eastern. He was Spanish. He lived in Australia. He had a Spanish heritage. Spanish, right? Yeah. The profile, you know, the profiling is always visual, right? Though, so like people make mistakes as well, and it's they're bad ones usually. <laughs> Yeah, well, this was that Vancouver. I was coming back from, back to Australia from Camp Vancouver. Mm. The guy was waiting for the plane with me. He got the he got the porter back to Australia, and I was having a talk for him because um, he was he was from Australia, and he seemed a little bit depressed. And I'm saying, hey man, what's going on? I'm Australia. I'm for, I'm an I'm an Aussie. I'm Australian. What's up, man? You need somebody to talk to. He said, yeah, man, the immigration department just reported me. I said, what for? And I can't remember what he said. It's been so long ago. But he said he had $4,500 on his credit card. He was only supposed to stay in Canada for three weeks. But they decided to deport him because of his colour of skin. And they felt intimidated that he may be from the Middle Eastern appearance. And I'm, and I'm saying... But you're not Middle Eastern. Yeah. You're from you're from Australia that got Spanish heritage in you. But see, at that time, a lot of people from Mexico, and this is not a kick at the Mexicans here. There was a lot of people from Mexico skipping the border into the United States and going as far as Vancouver, and they right. were getting caught in in Vancouver and being rounded up and deported back to Mexico. I. I was, I was seeing this when I was there for six months. And um, I think that might have came into play too, that because he he looks apart, but he's an Australian citizen. That was mm. the difference. He was an Australian citizen, and he got deported back to Australia. And I hope he's doing well. I haven't seen that guy since um, that day, but I hope he's doing well. I hope his um, family's doing well. And, yeah. Wow, yeah. But I, I'll do have. I'll do I, was, have yeah, I was. I was. I the reason I paused there. Sorry, I hesitated because I just have these memories of when I got deported from uh, from Britain, and it was. Uh, I don't know. It just. <laughs> I know what it's like, and it's really bizarre. Like uh, just being treated all of a sudden like you're a criminal, and 
Like, yeah, like I, I was in a lockup that's in the uh, bloody, uh, what do you call it? The uh, uh, immigration there. Sorry, go ahead. This is the question that's always been on my mind since I've been to Canada and back from Canada. We're all supposed to be part of the Commonwealth, yeah? Yeah. But why are they, but why are they treating us like freaking criminals? I had more freedom in America. They treated me like I was a king in, in America. I was, I was only there for, at the immigration department for three minutes yeah. in America, and I was allowed in. In Canada, now, we know the story about me marking off no on the immigration paper if you don't identify yourself as an alien. I put no. Yeah, but that's besides the point. We are, we, are, we are part of the Commonwealth. Why is the Commonwealth country treating the other Commonwealth country like garbage, but yet you can go to America, they treat you like a king or queen? Yeah. Why is that? You know, I, it it boggles my mind. My my grandfather, like you know, uh, like he was a Air Force pilot, like a, in the British Air Force. You know, fought for the country, and I'm in the same bloodline. You know, you know, I, I was coming back. I even mentioned that I was like, yeah, you know, I'm 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 here to go and find family that I know is here. You know, blah blah blah. And uh, you know, but I just came out of. Uh, a trip I was living in my truck for about three months. I was traveling across the provinces in Canada and um it was you know, I kinda had the Bushman look, I had the cowboy hat, you know. They're like, Do you have any money, sir? <laughs> you know, like they were just questioning the whole thing. But it was like, well, why are you even like I don't have a criminal record? Um you know, like there's so many aspects like why don't you just let me in? Thing thing is, I found out later is that I said all the wrong shit. What I should have said was, I'm only going to be here for a couple few days. I got a job back home and a girl I got to get back to, and I don't want to be here. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I should have said. But I digress. See, that's the um, thing. So I can get a British passport because my father was born in, in Scotland or England, Great Britain. I can get a British passport now. If you can if you can maintain a British passport, apparently it opens up more doors for you and you can enter more countries a lot more freely. Yeah. Australian pa- Australian passport, however, it kinds of limit I, I found the hard way when I went to Canada and I'm saying this can't be right. We're part of a conscious we're part of a Commonwealth, but you're treating your your Commonwealth um allies yeah. like criminals. Like, I can guarantee you, if I went to another uh, Commonwealth country, like, say, um, oh, let's say for New Zealand, for example, hmm. I won't have the problem with New Zealand like America and Canada got, because New Zealand's like our brother or sister country, right off the coast of Australia. But right. it's, like, it's like America and Canada. You always... Um, fight against each other because of the sport, whether it's ice hockey, baseball, you know, you name it, right? That's the little little gimmick joke that you guys got. But when it comes to politics, or especially in the foreign policy, total bile opposite, you know, total bile opposite. And I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. I couldn't. But anyway, um, to move forward on that, I think actually it's um, a good it's a good segue because I was going to say with the whole Commonwealth country thing, um, the the there's a there's a point where they don't bother you, and it's a paywall because everything has a paywall. We know that, Every, like you know, on uh, Streamyards they have a paywall. Basically, you can only do like two two sites or something. Then you got to pay for a pro a pro edition or something. You know what I mean? Like, but uh, well, I do want to. I want to mention just before we but, continue. But I was going to say what the paywall is, is if you buy property. You can buy property in any Commonwealth country with your with your cold, hard cash, and then suddenly suddenly they won't turn you away at the border anymore. You know, And that's the thing, is that that's why a lot of people, even if they buy just a house or they buy a business or they, you know what I mean? That's the paywall. Um, that you can apply for your dual citizenship if you have property. Well, the Australian Immigration Department is just as strict 
if not more stricter than the Canadian um, immigration yeah. department. It's so dead hard to get into Australia. And um, people are, are not happy about that. I'm not happy about that either. But mm. I can see the reason behind it when they're trying to stop illegal citizens coming into your country. I understand that. Yeah. 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 If they're not properly vetted, yeah, stop them. But if you haven't got anything to worry about, they shouldn't be forced to ask you all the questions under the sun. Just mm. because I put no as an alien, oh, okay, <laughs> I'll tell the story again. It's still a funny story. The immigration, the immigration paper that I was received before I got down in Vancouver, one of the questions states, do you identify yourself as an alien? I put no, because I've never seen that question before and I've never been asked that question before. So I put no. Now, the reason why I put no, I'm not from outer space and I'm not green. I, don't, I didn't come here on a, in a flying saucer to Earth. I'm, I'm, I'm a human being, right? So I put no. Later did I found out that aliens stand for foreign citizens. Well, why didn't you put that on the immigration paper? I didn't know what an alien was. I thought alien was from outer space. So I put no. So no wonder they kept me for four hours, but that's a funny story. They mm. saw the funny side of it. They let me stay there for six months, and it was a beautiful place. I miss Canada. I miss the people there. I miss the fun. But I do not yeah. miss the immigration department, and I do not miss the government. So, yeah, anyway. I, I, I hear you there. You know, it's funny because they – a lot like what's happening in Australia, we're we're going through a lot of the similar draconian politics. Like it's all, it's almost like we're just a couple of beats behind Australia. Like you know, like our prime minister, he signed on fully for this whole thing. Um, he's all in. One week he was a feminist, now he's uh now he's a pro vaxxer. Like he's like we got to shun everybody who doesn't do it and blah 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 blah. You know, but. So- while we continue on, I don't know how to, I can screen share this. Well, I will, probably will if it comes up. So I'm going to. If you screen share, share it, if you screen share it, what I'm doing right now actually is I'm blowing up your uh, I'm blowing up your box in the side window here, and I'm about to do a switch so people will be able to see it. Um, I'm just gonna. Uh, well, so just if, let me. You can share your screen me. in the conversation, right? Like in on Skype. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to do this. Just hold up for a second. Yep. 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 And um, this is something that this is the conversation that we've got here, so we can go through it. Um, this is on Facebook, um, but anyway, I'm going to read this out for people. Um, this is the breaking news that I got given to me after the broadcast of the show earlier tonight on uh, that we did. So this is um, from Victoria. Australia, the state of Victoria, Australia, Melbourne. And I'm going to read this. Charges were laid over hotel quarantine. Now, let me read this. WorkSafe has charged the Victorian Health Department with 58 breaches of the Occupational Health and Safety Act in relation to Victoria initial hotel quarantine program. Now, I'll just pause it there. Hotel quarantine is when you get put into to isolate or quarantine for 14 days if you're travelling back home from overseas or from interstate, you've got to quarantine in a hotel for 14 days. All right? Mm-hmm. 800, people, 800 people in Victoria died due to hotel quarantine last year. 800 people. All right? They either died from COVID no, sorry, they died with COVID, not from. With COVID, or they died from suicide or anything. But 800 people last year in the pandemic, 800 people died in hotel quarantine. Now, let me say this. The Department of Health, formerly the Department of Health and Human Services, have been charged with 17 breaches of Section 21.1 of the Occupational Health and Safety Act in that it failed to provide and maintain as far as reasonable, practical, a working environment that was safe without risk to the health for its employees. The department had charged 
with the further 41 breaches of Section 231 of the Occupational Health Act in that it failed to ensure, so far as we reasonably practical, that persons other than employees were not exposed to risk to their health and safety arising from the conduct of its undertaking. Mm. Between March and July of 2020 last year, the Department of Health was responsible for the oversight and coordination of Operation um, Sotera, Victoria's first hotel quarantine program. WorkSafe alleges that the Department of Health breaches occupational health and safety laws by failing to appoint people with infection prevention and control expertise to be stationed at hotels it was utilising for the program. It alleges the department failed to provide security guards with face-to-face -face in infection prevention control training by a person with expertise and IPC prior to the commencing of work and either failed or initially failed to provide them with instruction for the use of PVE. Mm. Work safe, further alleges the department failed to update written instructions relating to the wearing of masks at several of these hotels. In all charges, WorkSafe alleges the Department of Health employees, Victorian government authorised officers on Second Amendment, uh, Second Amendment or security guards were put at risk of serious illness or death through contracting COVID-19 from an infected return traveller, another person working in the hotels or from a contaminated surface. The maximum penalty for a body corporate for each of these charges, now check this out, the maximum penalty for a body corporate for each of these charges is $1.6 million. Hmm. The, complex, yeah, the complex investigation took 15 months to complete and involved reviewing tens of thousands of documents and multiple witness inter interviews. A review of the material from last year's COVID-19 hotel inquiry provided relevant context and information that informed parts of the investigation. Yet the decision to prosecute has been made in accordance with WorkSafe general pr prosecution guidelines, which require WorkSafe to consider whether there is sufficient evidence to support a reasonable prospect of conviction and whether bringing a prosecution in the public interest. Mm -hmm. Inquiries into other entities associated with this investigation, including hotels, security firms, and other government departments and agencies have concluded. The matter is listed for a filing hearing at the Magistrate Court on the 22nd of October, and we'll be doing a show on that. And WorkSafe will not be providing further comment as the matter is now before the court. Hmm. A number of other investigators relating to the role of COVID-19 related risks in the workplace remain ongoing. So the maximum penalty for a body corporate to breach is $1.6 million. There's 58 breaches. Of and the you know what, though? Of and that's the funny thing is that, that only the b big businesses could afford that kind of a fine. You know what I mean? So that right there, anybody breaks the rules that's like a small or medium-sized company, that's a crippling blow. You're gone. You're history. You're dead. You're yeah. dead in the water as a business. You're fucking. You're done. You're done for. You're roasted. You're 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 eaten. You're no more. You're, it's that's it. You're and, and like that fear. I mean, this is why businesses are just like bending over sideways. Like it's it, it, it's sad because um, if all the businesses just said no, just like like I'm asking people to boycott the companies and uh, to to vote with their wallets instead of at the at the you know at the polls this time. Like literally go and uh, not spend money at certain places. Guess what? Those they will start to react. Like they will start to respond, and that's the only way that we can have any leverage. You know. But what I'm trying to say is, but what I'm trying to say is, the Department of Health of Victoria has been charged. Yeah. Not the public. Yeah. For 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 breaching what, the Occupational Safety Act. But now, that's good. That's good. 
because they carried out an operation that was a uh, unethical, b uh, immoral, and c a violation of human rights. That was that they should be up against a tribunal for fucking wars against humanity. I'm uh, sorry, crimes against humanity. That's what comes down to the Biosecurity Act, well, and also the um the Privacy Act that we spoke about last night. If anyone breaches the Privacy Act of 1988 here in Australia. Mm-hmm. You are facing up to five years imprisonment and a sixty-six thousand dollar fine. Yeah. So I've been saying this: the government's been breaching these acts. Now, all of a sudden, later, the, later the, or earlier this, af- this afternoon, after we finished our show earlier, yeah, the the tables have turned back on it on the government of Victoria. They have breached fifty-eight breaches of the Occupation Health and Safety Act. Yeah. And one each breach it's a one point six million dollar fine. Well yeah. that pocket money come to the government. That's pocket yeah. money. See you look at it in the Yeah. And that's what I think it was Bill I think it was Bill C five six one. I or Bill C five six rather. And um, I could be wrong with the bill here in Canada, but that was the one I was telling you about yesterday. Uh, it was the it was a it was a privacy law. Um, amendment basically that dictated that uh, you know the, the any any of the services like you know police or whatever um, uh, intelligence all these groups the you know the, these basically these alphabet number soup uh, alphabet alphabet soup numbers here they can basically uh, use they can violate those rights and uh, obtain your information and in fact they demonstrated this uh, a friend of mine who will remain nameless for now um, he landed um, he was actually in Europe he was in um, he was in one of the European countries right when the first lockdown over there hit I th- I want to say I want to say it was uh, Italy or, or, or Spain, one of the two anyway point is is that he ended up flying back here and we were we were start we were starting out our first lockdown like it was basically uh the first uh rules were coming in with the mask wearing this is during the, the very first you know uh introduction i guess you could say and um they called ahead like at the airport when he left um he had a vehicle there and he basically had to drive the three days across canada to get to bc and they called ahead province to province to to say yeah so and so license plate yada yada car this description yeah he was just in this country and now he's here you know and they (laughs) he got hassled in every province on the way back and um it just it was lucky that the uh I guess the, the cops that were, that are enforcing it now, they weren't in practice of doing this yet. Like they hadn't, you know what I mean? They hadn't got their, uh, their, their walking orders yet. You know what I mean? So it was, it was rather, it was rather interesting, uh, in retrospect, because now that we're talking about these laws, I mean, they shouldn't have been able to do that because that would have been a, vi- a violation of his rights to disclose that information. If he had nothing, like they wouldn't just call ahead if you'd been in, in Spain or France and uh, you land, they don't call up another province ahead of time and say, you know, blah, blah, blah. They did it because, oh, he was in a place with COVID. That doesn't mean that it had proof that he did have it. You know what I mean? And, and even if he did, it'd still be a violation of his uh, privacy. Yeah. You know? So that, no crime was committed, from. basically. And here's the moral of the story is you think the government's going to be paying these breaches? No, it's going to be the taxpayers of Australian citizens paying for these breaches. Realistically, it's good that they broke up, that they've been charged with the breaches, but uh, the flip side of it, the Australian public is going to be the one that's paying for it. So, unfortunately, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, it, it does. And this is the thing. The dominoes are going to fall. It, I'm, I, I love it. I'm, I'm loving it right now. With, this is the start. With, every, with all the help from every single one of your listeners as well, and my listeners, like every single one of you is out there, uh, you know, uh, we're yeah. all part of this. Well, see, we saw, we saw last week of the protest with the construction workers and whatnot and how the mm-hmm. police were firing rubber bullets and all that. Well, this, this news that I just mentioned about the, the Department of Health being charged with 58 breaches of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, we're going to see the table t- um, turned back on the government. We're going to hold them accountable. 
for the last 20 months of all the crap that we've been facing, yeah, like I'm yeah. in South Australia, of all things, but it's not this point. We're all in it together, and yeah. we're starting to see the cracks appear in the government. We're going to hold them accountable for everything that they've done, no matter which state government it is or federal government. We're yeah. going to hold you responsible for all the actions that you have taken place over the last 20 months since this pandemic started. Right. You were supposed to serve us. Now we're going to hold you to the feast of the fire and make sure that you are held accountable for all the actions that you have done because it's unconstitutional. We've, we've been going through the Biosecurity Act and the Privacy Act. We're going to go through this pharma bill that we've been going through and that's what we should do. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Hold- and that's, uh, but I just wanted to say, uh, you can find this guy, uh, Jamie here. He's over, uh, at Southern truth, uh, 79 on Twitch. And, uh, you find us, uh, at EPGN underscore media over on my Twitch there. Um, take your choice, but sub us both. We both appreciate it. Um, and also on YouTube, you want to say your channel? I don't know the name of the channel. I got it here somewhere, but, uh, I don't have it in front of me. Another comment. We got another comment from Zodican seven eight two on Twitch. Um, he's stating this. I'm hoping the apartment falls, but in reality, they will probably weasel out of it and charge some low level Twitch. That, that's probably true. Yeah. But <clears throat> here's the thing: it's going to fall back to the going to fall back to the public, isn't it? Where, I mean, the tax payers is the one that's a, that pays the tax, and the money goes back to the government. All this is going to go back to the Australian people. So, unfortunately, it might look good on one way that the Department of Health is getting charged for this, but on the flip side, the public is going to be the ones that are paying for it. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think you're right there. I think you're right. Um, I, well, I mean, as, as, uh, don't we always, though? You know what I mean? I guess it's... It, <laughs> First off, I mean, taxation is theft. Let's just be frank about it. Uh, any form of taxation is theft in the first place. And you, you give them your hard-earned dollars. They want your blood, sweat, and tears. And uh, that's not enough. You know what I mean? It's just not enough for these fucking assholes. But, um, I mean, but most, we, we need more people to say no. Like, just no. I'm not, I'm not going to participate. Like, you got to remember a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the laws and legislations that are out right now are built upon statute and those statutes don't have to apply. Like they don't have to, if you don't let them. And I mean, as long as uh, enough of enough people let it happen, I mean, well, we're kind of just singing the same old song. Well, that's right, man, because we've been um, covering a lot of the protests last week and um, talking about the different uh, acts that was in place like the Biosecurity Act especially here in Australia that came in 2015 but we want to go a little bit um, back on that we want to go to like the Privacy Act I mean the Privacy Act happened here in Australia in 1988 and in Canada it happened in 1987 but the Commonwealth seemed to correspond every time when, when something like an act comes into play so before we get into the Privacy Act, we want to go into this farmer bill that was passed around 2015, around the time when the TPP happened. And the last country to fulfil that TPP, especially the farmer one, was New Zealand. They waited for New Zealand to sign the dotted line for everything to fall into place. And then you had the United States presidency of 2016 when Donald Trump won that election and pulled out of the TPP. But we're going to show, well, tell the audience, we can't really show it right now. On well, how, I, can, I, I can show it. Send me the link and I can pop it up. Is there a link or no? Well, this is the link. Um, which one you want? You want uh, I think this is the one that 
is that the medium one? Yes, it is. This is the one. This is the PDF file that you sent me, Rob, yesterday. So I think I think you've got it. So I'm going to send it to Rob. And this is a, the PDF file. This is a farmer one that happened around 2016, uh, 8th of December, 2016. And we've got another comment from Zodican. Non-compliance is the key. Stop complying with your own slavery. That's all right. That's true. Stop complying. But here's a problem, though, Zodican. A lot of people have complied. That's the problem. A lot yeah. of people have complied. Therefore, that compliance has given more power to the government. The, the government is saying jump, the people are saying how high. We've got to stop this. We do have to stop okay. this. But anyway, you got I didn't get, I didn't I don't think I got the message on the Skype there. Uh, yeah, it's on Skype. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't know why. Yeah. It's in the chat. It's in the chat. Yeah. Oh now it's there. Okay, now I've got it. Okay. All right. Okay, copy the link. Yeah, I was actually you know what's funny, it's just while you were talking there. I uh literally yeah. just uh was setting up the the next screen that's going to have a web screen. I'm literally building these screens as we're as we're talking. By the way, so we'll have them for next time in, in their arrangements. <laughs> Whoops! Shit! Smack uh, myself in the face. Uh, had, so you got that in front of you? What's that? You got that PDF file open up in front of you? I'm just about to here. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Uh, so we're going to read the first. We're going to read the first two pages, and like I said, the information that Rob and I've got, we're going to do a series of shows, oh, wow. um, opening these these um, pages up. It's not just the pharmaceutical act. We're also going to look at the the privacy act, the biosecurity act, the TPP, the, which is a Trans Pacific Partnership deal. We're going to look at, into that. Because all the deals that that has been done, we it's basically what we see now, right? This all these deals have empowered in such a way that the police are now militarizing that power onto its own citizens. And this is a snowball effect that's been going on approximately twenty years in the making because the the TPP, the Trans Pacific Partnership deal, they were trying to do that back in around about 2002 ish, 2003, but it didn't go anywhere. It was done until this, um, this farmer deal. Here we got, uh, there's, yeah. there, there's the we article go. there. Oh, that, that's the old one. That's the oh. other one. That's, oh, that's, that's the, I thought that was the one that you sent me. All right. <laughs> that was the charges. That, that was the charges. Hang on. Okay, let me uh, pull um, you back up over here. Let me see. <laughs> I'll get. I'll, I'll get it. Don't worry. I I thought that was the last one you said. There's. I don't know what the yeah, hell. Was it? Oh, by, oh I got it here. Farmac government. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. There yeah. was a bit of a. I don't know. It was a weird delay in the time it took to send it. It was weird. Oops. Yeah. But this is good. I mean, this. This information should be um, presented to the general public, no matter what country you may live in. And like I said um, to my listeners um, before, if you haven't already followed Southern Truth 79, hit the follow button. But also I want to do this. If you haven't followed EPGN Media on Twitch, go over there and follow EPGN Network. Well, I'll say it again. EPGN Network. Uh, is it network or media? media? Oh, no, no. It's just uh, EPGN underscore media. Yeah. Yeah. That's on Twitch. So go over there and um, follow them as well, please. Follow that. And, because that's what we're doing. So EPGN right. underscore media. It's on Twitch. Go over there and follow. So here it is. This is the first page. This is back in... December 8th, 2006. Decisions regarding the pharma implementation of the Trans-Pacific Partnership provisions and other amendments to application process. Pharmac is pleased to announce that changes will be made to its operation policies and procedures and other concerning application processes. 
This was subject of a consolation document released on the 5th of September 2016. In summary, the effect of the decision <laughs> is that awesome. Section 2.1 of the OPP will be amended with immediate effect and the following changes will come into effect when the TPP come into force for New Zealand. Section 4.1 and 4.5 of the OPP will be amended. A new decision type decline of proposed will be able to be applied to decisions. An online application tool and product application assessment record. Now this is the details. We'll look at the details of the decisions. Operation policies and procedures section 2.1 amendments of the pharmaceutical schedule. Pharmaceutical suppliers, clinicians, consumers, DHB and other interested parties may approach Pharmac to suggest possible amendments to the schedule. Now I want to know what the schedule is. Well, we'll get into that. Mm. Using the process described in the relevant funding application guidelines, Pharmac may amend the schedule as it considered appropriate, including intonating amendments of its own accord. Possible amendments to the schedule include, but are not limited to, A, listing new pharmaceuticals, B, changing the terms on which the pharmaceutical is listed, including changing guidelines or restrictions on prescribing and dispensing, changing the subsidy level of pharmaceutical as a result of Pharmac adopting one of the strategies set out in Section 3 or by other means, delisting pharmaceutical or delisting part of or of a therapeutic group or subgroup, changing packaging sizes and brand names, changing the indications, formulations, presentations and other feature of a listed pharmaceutical. C, amending the basis on the, which pharmaceuticals are classified into therapy groups or subgroups. D, pushing of information or requirements relating the implications of contract for supply to DHB hospitals. Now let's go to page two. Page two is there. Um, section two point one of the OPP takes effect immediately. The numbering and heading of the operation policies and procedures, section two point one, will be amended as further required in additions of the operation policies and procedures. Now the operation policies and procedures section four point one general. Here we go. All applicants are encouraged to contact Pharmac prior to making any decision for funding for a federal, for a chemical or biological entity to discuss the application. The procedure to be followed in respect of an application for an amendment to the schedule may vary depending on a number of factors, including uh, the schedule. <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The schedule. <laughs> including A, the nature of the amendment, for example, new listing, delisting classification. B, who has initiated the amendment? Biomax supply interested parties and whether it is the first time they had made this application. C, the type of pharmaceutical being listed, for example, a new medicine or generic medicine, a medical device related product or related thing. D, whether the amendment will result from an RFP tender listing, uh, listing contact or another arrangement. Hmm. E, yeah. e, whether the amendment is a result of Pharmac adopting a new strategy or F, any current funding arrangement in place for the same or competitor product. Pharmac may require a party initi um, initiating an amendment to the schedule. Now, we'll need to find out what the schedule is. To provide the application relevant information, including but not limited to pharmacological information, form, strength indicated, doses, um, contract indications, therapeutic information, main therapy claims, advantages, disadvantages when compared with other pharmaceuticals. 
price information proposed price price overseas other pricing proposal epidemiological information number of people with a particular condition number likely to prescribe the pharmaceutical and that's what i want to point out this pandemic right the information has made the pandemic an epidemic because the number of people with a particular with a specific condition covid would be likely to be prescribed the pharmaceutical well how many pharmaceuticals for covid right now there is BioNTech, Pfizer, J and J, Moderna, AstraZeneca. There's six of them out there. So that's what it is. E, market information. F, detailed information on the cost and benefits of the pharmaceutical. For example, reductions in temperature, improvement in longevity, longevity, sorry, and or quality life and G information regarding packaging and pack sizes. Pharmac will decide what information it requires on a case by case basis. For example, less information may be required where a party proposed the Pharmac lists a generic pharmaceutical as opposed to the listing of new pharmaceuticals. <clears throat> And there, that by the way, that that kind of goes hand in hand with uh, what we were talking about on your show there, Jamie. Um, the the generics are pretty much uh, like I said, they're what the poor people. They're they're basically the bottom of the barrel. Like they're the uh, you know the the sludge. <laughs> like they they they're getting the 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 crap. You know, and the good stuff goes to all the uh, the, the 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 famous people and uh, you know the spokespeople and what have you. Actually, most. <laughs> I would like to know how many of the spokespersons don't want this shit and, and won't take it. Yeah. Well, the thing I want to know is, Rob, what is the schedule? Is the schedule in that uh, media? You, I have an answer for you. Um, I don't know what the schedule is, but where you will find it will be at the beginning of this documentation where it starts off with 1.1.1. Uh, uh, like, it'll be in the preface. It'll be like, blah, 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 hereby being referred to as the schedule. It will be at the beginning of this document, like the very tippy top of it. Yeah. Not this, not necessarily, because we're already. This is what, uh, like four, right? We're we're in four or something. It, it'll be the article. It'll, it'll be before. It'll be like an intro, like a couple pieces of uh, documentation that'll be like the introductory um, opening to this thing. <clears throat> so that's where you would find it. If I'm pretty sure, because they referred to it so many times now. I, I was thinking of that uh, scene in Hot Fuzz, you know the movie. I was thinking of that scene where they're, they're talking about the greater good, the greater good, and they all chant it, like, every time it gets said. Anyway, <laughs> the schedule. Was Dodekin says on Twitch, um, thanks, Dodekin, for this, the schedule is attached to the act of part of the act, so that's what it is, so. Yeah. That's that that uh, sounds that sounds reasonable, yeah, that sounds like what it would be, because the way that they're talking about it, it's not like a, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're talking about any particular products or anything. They're talking about a, a different thing altogether. Yeah. Well, we've got, to, see, we've got so many pages here. It's like, um, you know, Pharmac, well, this one's on page three. This is 4.1.6. Uh, yeah, 4.1.6. Pharmac will operate a TPP track for an application to, that meet the eligibility criteria. Yeah, the open track. I, I want to say something else, by the way. I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, I'm noticing this now. Um, this is very, very, very similar. And I'd almost say that this, like what I read six years ago or seven years ago when we covered this originally, um, yeah. I think this is all boilerplate. I think like they just literally like swap out the name Pharmac. Okay, Pharmac. And then it just it just goes right through the whole document. I think this is a boilerplate uh, document because this is almost verbatim to what I remember reading. Um, and it's going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, formulation, presentation, combination, or any other use of a chemical or biological entity that has been the subject of a previous application. So this is where they're actually, they, they can basically uh, uh, copyright or patent uh, biological entities now because they can create them, right? So anyway, sorry, I, I won't take it away from you. Go on. <laughs> 
Well, Rob, if you look at 4.1.7.3, this is something I want you to do for a medicine as defined in the Medicine Act as of February the 4th, 2016. Can you find out the Medicine Act? Can you put that up for us? Medicine Act of mm -hmm. 2016. Yeah, yeah. Medicine and Act. Because this is... This is run yeah. hand in hand with the pharmaceutical act. Now, is this um, what, what country? This is uh, New Zealand, right? Yep, that's the okay. one there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just making sure I wasn't going totally crazy. <laughs> New Zealand the, Medicine Act of nineteen eighty one, twenty sixteen. Yeah, there it is. Uh, do, oh, I, uh, wait, hang on. Is it in here? I uh, just. Uh, There's a mention of it here. Medicine there was a, yes, a, a medicine act of 2016. Which, uh, this was, oh, this was, was just be. Did you oh, find it? Go. I tried to get on other food and stand it's not, but I'm just a partnership. So, yeah, February 4th, there was a. Uh, yeah, February 4th of 2016, there was a medicine. Act. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's part of the TPP, it's part of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Medicine Act. If it's a, the fourth of February, two thousand sixteen. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, we were wrong. Uh, just an update for anyone who was listening to the last show on uh, on Southern Sentinel's uh, show. Um, yeah, uh, we were wrong. Africa was not part of the TPP. Not not one country from Africa was part of the TPP, actually. Um, it was uh, Australia, Brunei, Can Canada, Chile, uh, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, and Singapore, Vietnam, and the United States all signed on February the 20th, uh, yeah, February 4th, 2016. So, yeah, and yeah, we'll say that was signed under the Barack Obama administration, but yeah, when sure Donald was. Trump became president, he withdrew from the DPP. Yeah, um, hmm, euthanasia yeah. in New Zealand, sorry, <laughs> caught my attention. Yeah. Yeah, they, um, that, that's been going on for a while too. But the Medicines Act, the Medicines Act of 2016, that's what we've got to look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm just looking at what came up there. Sorry, I get, to, I got ADD, man. Deal with it. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Medicines Act. I've got this link. I've got to go to. Um, Here's a legislation from the government. I've just got this. I will put it in. Is that uh, the uh, designated will... prescriber? That's, it just... sounds like it. Hang on. I think this is Thank the you. uh, what you're looking for. Uh, yeah. Zodican, the... Zodican game is this. Yeah, you got that? Yeah. Is that so the one? That's a, that's a reprint of as the 31st of January 2018. So that's the old the... act. Right. Okay. That's the old act before they brought the new one in. Yeah. Um, you got the same one as what I've got? Is it? Yeah. You do. Yes, okay. you do. So, um, bad income. But uh, thank you out there. Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. That is the one. Now, what, what page are you on? <laughs> oh, I was just, uh, I was just uh, having a, a, a little gander. Yeah, I've got the reprint one. I've got the reprint one of, of the thirty first of January two thousand and eighteen. Okay, the same one. This one says order the one, the council. Yeah, the one that you twentieth of there. June. This is the one after. Yeah. Yeah. It um it reads the Medicine Amendment Act for twenty sixteen for here. Yeah, I've got. Got the um the reprint one. <laughs> For some okay. reason, I've got the reprint do, of do 2018. Want... Okay, well, send me that link and I'll put it up too. I'll put it up in the new tab. Uh, uh, it, it won't it won't go further than what it is, but um yeah, I'll put it in here. This 
you can put this one up. This it's the same one, but I've got a reprint. If you look at that one, that's a reprint of two of 31st of January 2018. Medicine Amendment Act of 2016. But I've got the reprint. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yep. There you huh. go. I've got huh. the reprint. Huh. Wow. This is just entertaining us, really. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but, um, so they've, reprinted it, they've reprinted it in, in 2018, but if you want to hit the the principal act there, yep. hit the principal act. Medicine Act 81. Yeah, so this is an extension of the Act of 81. Because everything, they'll, they'll build and amend it, right? And that's what they do in these new bills that they pass. And I've always said it too, hey, eh? by the way, when they give you, when they give, like, let's say they, they legalize marijuana, because that's a really good example. Um, everybody wants it legalized. So they decriminalize it first, which is awesome, because you don't get arrested for having it. That's great. But then they go and legalize it. And then the producers that were making it are no longer able to produce it because now they have to acquire licenses for their businesses and they have to follow certain aspects. And, and then they have to go under uh, uh, a, co a committee selection basically uh, to see if they're, you know, it's like getting a liquor license uh, in, well, in Canada. Anyways, it's kind of difficult because they look at all your neighbors and see what they're doing as businesses and blah, blah, blah. There's a whole big deal about it. And the same thing goes with the weed. And uh, then they yeah. find out that people who actually have health benefits from using the weed, well, now they can't get it, or even at the prices that they used to with the dispensaries, because now all the dispensaries are shut down because they legalized it. <laughs> it, it it's, it's, it's counterintuitive. So you've got the Act of 1981, which was repeated on May 2021 of this year. On the contents um, below there, can you... Get the meaning of medicine, new medicine, prescription medicine, and restriction medication. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Let's read that one. Oh, and if you want to read that out, you can. All right, there. Uh, the meaning of medicine, new medicine, prescription medicine, and restricted medicine in this act, unless the context otherwise requires medicine, A, means any subject or article that is manufactured, imported, sold, or supplied wholly or principally uh, for administering to one or more human beings for a therapeutic, a therapeutic purpose and achieves or is likely to achieve its principal intended action in or on the human body by pharmacological, immunolo immunological, or metabolic means and includes any substance or article that is manufactured, imported, sold, or supplied wholly or principally for use as a therapeutic active ingredient in the preparation of any substance or article that falls within paragraph A, or of a kind or belonging to a class that is declared by regulations to be a medicine for the purposes of this act. You know, it's funny. This is the, this is, like I said, this is almost verbatim to what I remember reading, but it, it wasn't, uh, yeah, it was just weird because I think it's boilerplate. I think it was in a copy of this, but just like the generic version of it, not, necessarily for new zealand it was just the name left out like applicant or something it had in there you know what i mean yeah so anyway hang on no um, oh, i was just going to say the next uh, th the things that it does not include it, this is kind of you got to look at this too a medical device or any food within the meaning of section two of the food act because of course they have the food act um, any radioactive material within the meaning of sections of the radiation safety act of 2016 or any animal food in which a medicine with the, within the meaning of a paragraph or be a lot of reference to these other things that they already have. So they, like I said, they don't write anything new in these articles. Uh, any substance or article of a kind or belonging to a class that is declared by regulations not to be a medicine for the purpose of this, of this act. And that's where um, at the time I was doing a lot of uh, investigative research with uh, the holistic community, with uh, Western medicine, and uh, you know, determining aspects on both sides. And uh, this was one of the ways uh, with this clause. Is that's kind of how they get rid of the holistic medicines because if they can't be, uh, you know, declared to be a medicine because they have to follow some certain uh, categorical uh, similarities, you know, like they define it, they define the rules. And then because holistic stuff can't be uh, 
because it's not synthetic, it can't be standardized because it's not like a, a, a thing you can quantify. You know, natural products are natural products, and you know, they they just don't they can't do it. It's a violation of this, and then that's how they you know would lose their license if they were to breach that law. It's it's fucking insane. Um, so they killed holistic doctors very very quickly with some of the treatments that were out there, and. Uh, they had to change the language now because now they're not treatments, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a constant war. But anyway, um, I'm, I, I should digress there. In this act, unless the context otherwise requires, new medicine means any medicine that has not been generally available in New Zealand before the commencements of this act or at any time during a period of five years immediately preceding the date on which it is proposed to become so available that any medicine immediately before the commencement was a therapeutic drug to which Section 12 of the Food and Drug Act applied to, and in respect of the sale or distribution which the minister had not given his consent under that section. And things like the Cancer Act, like in 1987, uh, there's a 1987 Cancer Act, or is it the 1981? I think it's the 1981 Cancer Act, I'm not sure. But... um. Regardless, they have all these other acts that, you know, are basically just being kind of amalgamated together and being kind of reconstituted uh, in this new one. But anyway, uh, any medicine that immediately before the commencement, okay, I read that, any medicine that becomes a medicine within the meaning of this act for the first time after the commencement of this act. Um, means any new shit the pharma pharmaceutical companies can come up with, basically. Like, <laughs> whatever you come up with that you haven't thought of, well, fire away. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, any medicine that is referred to by the minister under Section 24, again, a reference, pharma pharmacy-only medicine means a medicine that is declared by regulations made under this act or by a notice given under Section 106 to be one that, except as may be permitted by the regulations, may be sold by retail only in a pharmacy or hospital in any shop described in Section 512 in accordance with license issued under Part 3, which is what I was talking about earlier with the... Uh, uh, pot places, the, the, the dispensaries, uh, or supplied in circumstances corresponding to retail sale only. So again, all of these things have specific regulations that they themselves fall under um, in terms of management uh, of you know the products that they sell. Like so, I mean, like it, everything has like a. We were talking about chain of custody earlier. That's what it is. It's chain of custody of uh, of responsibility, basically, and each yeah each step of the way there's some somebody in charge of what they can and can't do um in a pharmacy or hospital or in any shop described in section 51 okay i read that in accordance with standing order prescription medicine means a medicine that is declared by regulations or by a notice given under section 106 to be one that except as may be permitted by regulations may be sold by retail only under prescription given by an authorized pr uh, prescriber veterinarian or delegated prescriber and basically anybody in a fucking lab coat and that's it. <laughs> like, I, I mean, a licensed lab coat where we're... That's brutal. But anyway, um, is there anything else you want me to read from here? Because it's pretty much... Uh, oh, I guess restricted yeah. medicine. Hang on. This is probably a good uh, yeah, end point here. Uh, restricted medicine means a medicine that is declared by regulations made under this act or by a notice given under Section 106 to be one that, except as may be permitted by the regulations, may be... Sold by retail only by a pharmacist in a pharmacy or hospital or supplied circumstances corresponding to retail sale only by a pharmacy in a pharmacy or hospital or in accordance with standing order. Um, okay, we'll just hold it then. Then why aren't the pharmaceutical company or especially the pharmacy not operating the COVID injections? Interesting, right? And, and not only that... Um, do you remember, and this probably, I, I don't know if anybody does know, make sure you, you send us a, a message, but they they changed the law, and they in some states, I don't think every state went with this, of course, but um, in a few states and in some countries, uh, they've given the, the, the ability to teachers uh, uh, and school nurses to uh, uh, administer the jab. Um and and this is going back a few years. This is going back to about uh, probably I will. You know what? I am. I'm gonna put my bet and money on 2016. I'm gonna put my bet and money on 2016. Yeah, I'm putting I'm putting my button on the 2015 when that when that TPP um, deal started around about. Well, it it went from 2015 to early 2016. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yep, yep, yep. 
And that was under the Barack Obama administration. It was his last yeah. year of his eight-year run. Yeah. But as it, soon as Donald Trump got elected in November 2018, uh, 2016, he pulled out. Yeah. He pulled out of the seat. I don't yeah. know who said it, but somebody said it uh, best on one of my shows back in the day, and it was uh, regarding that. And they said, you know, uh, someone starts doing that to the kids, man. Uh, bullets are going to start flying. It's going to get it's going to get nuts real fast, you know. And I don't know. I think the boiling frog. I I actually I'm not. I I can't say I agree with that anymore. I I agreed back in the day, you know, because it was a different time. Now, the, like I said, the frogs are pretty bo- parboiled at this point. Well, can you do me a favor? Can you go on Google and yeah. search for Dr. Ford states that there will be a virus under the Trump administration? Can you find that for us, please? There, there will be a virus. There will be a virus under the Trump administration. Okay. That's what Dr. Anthony Fauci said in around about 2015, 16. Under the Trump administration. <laughs> Maybe it could be 2017 he said that. By the way, uh, that's DuckDuckGo. Um, I can't do what I do and actually promote Google. I try my best not to use uh, their products, but, uh, you know, you, you kind of you have to use some of them, but I definitely don't promote them. I use DuckDuckGo for my search engine, and uh, that's a Dr. true story. Dr. you said, and he predicted, that there will be a virus outbreak under the Trump administration. There's an article there. Yeah, it's funny. It, it, the fact checkers, there's already a fact checked article on this. Hang on, I want to just check that out real quick because if the fact checkers are saying it's not true, it's probably true. The claim Anthony yeah. Fauci said in 2017, Trump will no doubt face infectious disease outbreaks. They're talking about that, what you're saying. Um, but what did Fauci really say this? Hang on, I want to hear the answer. I was dying to know. Was, a Google search of the headline revealed that the screenshot of the article is authentic and came from Helio News, a specialty clinical information website, and was in fact published on January 11th, 2017. The article, Fauci, no doubt, Trump will face surprise infectious disease outbreak. <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. Says uh, Fauci's remarks came during a forum on pandemic preparedness at Georgetown University. Oh, well, I guess it, yeah, I guess it happened. Or maybe it didn't, though. No. I don't know. <laughs> well, hang on. We're going to go We're gonna go check that. Uh, we, we, you want the video? Yeah, let's find the video. Yeah, man. We've got to get the, we've got to get the sound quality for that. There yeah. you go. Oh, we had it. Can't hear it? Yeah, we've got no volume from the video. Give me a sec. Uh-uh. Oh, play back. do 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 these are the little things I got to get ready ahead of time, and uh, but we're all good though. Uh, Jack, may, may not, oh, there we go. Hey, what the heck? Oh, did that just disappear the second I did that? Hang on a second. Pandemic uh, preparedness, there you go. and if there's one message, that there will be a surprise outbreak. Given, as you heard from the introduction, that I have been around for a while and have had the opportunity and and the privilege and the pleasure of serving in five administrations, um, I thought I would bring that perspective to the topic today is the issue of pandemic uh, preparedness. And if there's one message that I want to leave with you today based on my experience, and you'll see that in a moment, is that there is no question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. And I hope by the end of my relatively short- There will be, a, there's no surprise. You will understand why history, <laughs> the history of the last surprise outbreak. years that I've been the director of NIAID will tell <laughs> the next administration that there's no doubt in anyone's mind that they will be faced with the challenges that their predecessors were faced with. 
So for those who think that infectious diseases is gone, there's so many people who've made foolhardy statements not oh knowing at the time that they made them. I usually show a quote from an old surgeon general or an old uh, pundit in infectious disease. So I thought I'd pull this one out from Sir McFarlane Burnett, who was actually a, uh, a Nobel Prize winning immunologist. Uh, who made the statement, as many did, to write about infectious diseases is almost to write of something that has passed into history. The most likely forecast about the future of infectious diseases is that it will be very dull. <laughs> Which is really kind of interesting coming from a semi-genius like McFarlane Burnett. And I think what he did in the mistake that so many people so have many... made is something that it's several so of us Hang on, stop. This guy's fucking killing me. <laughs> Fuck, why is he doing this? He should be doing stand-up. This is great. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I don't know. Oh, giving him too much credit, I guess. Sorry about that. Okay, I have to get myself, put, put myself back together. Of our panelists have already referred to, and that is a failure to look beyond our own borders in the issue of the globality of health issues, not only things that are there that will come here, but surprises that we have. What are the lessons that we learned from HIV? One, you have to commit substantial financial and human resources. These things don't get uh, uh, addressed spontaneously by themselves. You have to enlist the best and the brightest investigators in both basic and clinical research. You have to involve the community be it the gay community in the United States or the community in Africa and West Africa when we wow. got Ebola or the people. Oh. Drop the fucking presses right there. Guess what? It's it's funny because AIDS literally broke out in uh, Africa in a place known as the AIDS Belt um, after the hepatitis B. Now, this is just, uh, you know, tinfoil hat territory, right? <laughs> but, uh yeah, no, seriously, it was uh, administered. The hepatitis B vaccine was given out uh, in, in the uh, very early 80s. I, I want to say 83 or 82, but uh, it also was uh, administered in, as a test drug uh, that, that they paid uh, the gay community money. Like the people could come in and do this experimental drug for money, and each one of them ended up getting HIV and uh, eventually AZT and uh, got full blown AIDS and yeah, the rest is history. It's just funny that he would mention that AIDS and then those two demographics like following immediately after like, just, like, wow. sounds like you're talking about AIDS, <laughs> you know? Yep. And uh, remember what we said earlier, remember what we were talking about earlier about the immune system and what they're giving them, uh, giving the people it's, it's basically a, a diluted, kind of a, it's a it's a more controlled version of aids where they're going to make people dependent upon this uh vaccination we'll say, they'll have to get regular before, vaccinations basically to stay alive yeah before you continue we got central says this in in a twitch channel on southern truth 79 central says this also it's funny how every rainbow flag you see on twitter or everywhere else a hardcore jab puts us totally brainwashed Oh yeah. Well, here's a weird thing, right? And I, you know what? My heart goes out to those guys and girls and whatever you want to call the rest of them, um, and whatever letter the, of the alphabet. Look, they've been trained by social medias, uh, to, to like almost corralled together, and in a way, created this niche uh, of uh, of or this niche of uh, what do you call it? Uh, solidarity, um, but against everyone else. Like it's put this this, this whole like the last couple administrations in the United States, uh, um, a lot of these, I think a lot of these things stem from this TPP agreement, like, and probably agreements before, like this hasn't been, this isn't, uh, an isolated thing that's been going on for five years. This has been going on for an entire two or three generations. Uh, I, I have to say, um, but it's now reaching like a final act uh, or what they think, I guess is the final act or, you know, it's probably getting there, but uh, point is, is that it's been uh, it, it's been a slow burn. Okay, you know what I mean. Like it's yeah. been a it's been a really slow burn, and but now they're starting to play all the cards, and by isolating all these groups, getting everyone warring against each other, 
like people are just ready to, to to go off. Like, look at the kids. I swear, I feel bad for these kids that are living through this right now because, like, the ones growing up that have always, you know, like they were like you know five months old and had a had a iPad in their hand or something. You know what I mean? Like they've they've been they're growing up with the social media aspects of things. And I think I think personally they're growing up far too quickly. But here's the thing: is right now with this, like they were they they already had a shit deal to begin with, and now you add this disease to it and social distancing, uh, the the um the mask wearing, the not touching. Like I mean, kids they're supposed to touch each other. You know what I mean? They're they, that, that that that's just being a kid, and that's also how you get um uh, that's how how you grow immunity to, to diseases too. Like let's be fair about it. But anyway, I'm not. By the way, I'm not a medical. Uh, professional of any sort don't have to listen to me i just have common sense anyway <laughs> disclaimer but uh just because i'm on youtube by the way but but uh point is though is that uh you know we we got to do this uh like we got to do this the the better way man like these kids are gonna have like uh, uh you know authoritative positions like down the road like 20 30 years from now the kids will have like jobs with authority oh. and how are they going to be able to uh do anything like of that nature without making some really messy mistakes like i mean yeah, i just I, I i get flustered when i think about it because the kids are like, are going to be the ones who ultimately fail because of what we're putting them through like they're going to learn a twisted like moral code a twisted life world view like everything's just going to be so twisted when they when they get to that position of power one day you know and it doesn't matter if they're running a super supermarket or if they're uh, you know like a politician or a lawyer hell forbid they're in the military like you know they'll just be mindless killers drones continue on with that video because yeah 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 you're talking about the dicker virus now. Yep, yep. I got a whole lot to say about that. People in South America, when we're dealing with Zika, you have to have cross-sector collaboration. You can't do it alone. The CDC can't do it alone. The NIH can't do it alone. You do it with all of us, with industry, with global organizations, with philanthropy and NGOs, and you got to get the leaders and the policymakers involved. What is for sure that no matter what, history has told us definitively that it will happen because infectious diseases, as I said eight years ago in this article with David Warrens and Greg Fokers, that it is a perpetual challenge. It is not going to go away. So the thing we're extraordinarily confident about is that we are going to see this in the next few years. Thank you. I don't know, but it looked like he couldn't keep a straight fucking face. Well, I said this. I want to. I want to drop a bombshell to the listeners out there. Last year, when the pandemic first started to spread out, and then we had the lockdown, I said, and I make this quote: "We're going to see this pandemic roll out for the next seven years. There's going to be forced vaccinations. There's going to be vaccine passports, which we currently." So I thought I said this last year. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody, well, yeah. Anybody with an ear to to the ground should have been able to see this coming. If they, you know what I mean, like. Uh, that's... We're going to see lockdowns. We're going to see restrictions in place for the next seven months. Ah, uh, seven years. Sorry, seven years. Yeah. This pandemic, which is not really a pandemic in my opinion, but for what it is. Yeah. This episode. It's going to go on for the next seven years. Yeah, we are now coming up. We're now coming up to the end of 2021. This is the agenda 2030. So by the end of 2028, 29, we're going to see a different shift. Yeah, for the oh, they'll they'll have the crabs in the bucket by then for sure, and then then it'll just be about rebuilding under the new system. That that's what their plan yeah. is anyway. You can stop sharing that um, screen share now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, I've well, got the article there. So yeah, I know. I just, to... I just switched a tab there. I'm just going to uh, do a quick uh... – I was working on another page, actually, when we were doing all that. There we so go. We That's what go... I want. Uh, we've got to go back to our um... – yeah, there it is. 
So um, for people that have, that are watching, thank you so much um, for all the support that I've been receiving from you guys over the last few weeks. You guys are bloody legends. I want to say thank to Centra, thank to Zodican seven eight two, and thank for everybody that followed. I mean, I'm not here to be popular. I'm not here to to get any high numbers. I'm here just to share information, and you guys, I want to, I want to say you, you guys are bloody legends for coming over here and supporting this, what we do, and um, please share it to your friends, your work colleagues, your neighbour, get them over. And Rob here has introduced me to his um, his media platform called EPGN underscore Media. Go to his Twitch account too, and follow that. And we're going to be building this radio online network for you guys. There's going to be so many shows. There's already people from Ireland that are currently doing shows as well. And we all want to wake one person up one day at a time. Um, Dodi can right. say this. If this what happens under the fake pandemic, what is going to happen when the real biblical play begins? I try to imagine. Well, what do you think, Rob? What do you think when the real by biblical play comes? Can you can you can you repeat that last part? The I didn't quite catch. Does that say biblical or lyrical? I couldn't quite understand. Yeah, yeah, biblical. Like I'll, I'll repeat this. I'll repeat what um Zodican seven eight two said in Twitch on the chat room. If well, this is huh. what happening under the under this fake pandemic. What is going to happen when the real biblical play begin? I yeah. to imagine. Well, here's here's what I gotta say about that because I don't I don't have an answer directly for that, but I will say this: if that there was a real plague, oh yeah, you see everybody be shitting their pants, and since they're not, they don't look. Did you look like? Uh, did it look like Fauci was worried? He looked like he couldn't keep a straight face. Think, look at that. Like, yeah. Like, that's my take on it. I mean, like, I don't know, like my answer for you, like, I really don't know. I don't have those answers, but I will say this. If it was a real issue, um, they wouldn't know how to handle it. And I, I have a funny suspicion. They'd be making a lot more mistakes if it was a real deal. Like they, that's when they'd be fumbling around and, and then you'd see some sloppy, messy shit <laughs> happening. And that, well, those are the signs that it's real because humans make mistakes and they make lots of them. It's, 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 it's a want, fact. I want to say this. Back in um, late February, early March, just before the lockdown happened here in Australia, a good friend of mine, Eric Fitfire Wilkinson, and I, we were seeing videos from the ground of Wilhelm. And we were seeing people on the ground absolutely com like in a convulsing state. They were shaking like they were in convulsions. Both Eric and myself, we we said straight out, this is this is this looks like a bio weapon attack. As the months went on, we we kind of say that this if this is a bio weapon attack, well they've done a pretty shit job. Oh, it's definitely not an attack, in my opinion. I think it's part of a plan. It might have it might have it might have got out early. It might have. It, it, they, they might have actually been trying to uh, do a controlled uh, test that probably got out of hand, I think, maybe. Um, I, I mean, this is all pure entire speculation, of course. Like, please don't don't don't, don't think I'm spreading gospel here. But uh, that's that's my take on it. That's my opinion. Um, I think certainly there I think they were making a weapon. I think this is definitely a weaponized uh, disease. I think what they've done over the last 20 months, they've released the bioweapon, which is this virus, very slowly. And it didn't impact as much as what many people thought it would be. However, when they do release it full time, we're going to know about it. Yeah. Right? We, are, we are definitely going to know about it. Right? Like, I do believe that what happened in Wuhan was a massive psyop. Many people were reporting that oh, it 
it came from the wet markets and bats and blah 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 yeah, blah yeah blah. yeah just just like uh, the AIDS virus came from uh uh, came from a monkey first it was uh that uh somebody i guess they came to the conclusion that maybe he had sex with a monkey but no actually it turned out that it was a hunter that hunted a mon monkey and you know uh i guess his messy product uh processing of the animal resulted in him getting aids like blood in a cut or something so he got he got the aids from the monkey that way uh, i don't know but it, that's a story but I mean, it makes no sense because technically uh that when you you can't like if 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 animal is a vector for a disease, the 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 animal doesn't have the disease. It's it's just a vector for. It's just a carrier. They're not symptomatic. You know what I mean? But they don't trans. They don't transmit um, infectious diseases from species to species unless they're designed to do so. Well, that's why I truly believe the reason why they rolled out the vaccine as quick as they did because of what is going to happen eventually. Not what's happening now, what's going to happen eventually. Those bad things that people have got themselves jabbed with ain't going to prevent them what is about to come. I can't say what is going to come because I don't know, but history will always repeat itself. We saw this happen 100 years ago with the Spanish flu, but the point of the matter is, with the Spanish flu, there wasn't really a proper vaccine for it, if at all, to combat that virus. Many people around the world die from this. This one, however, they were expecting a high number of deaths, right? But it never happened. That the data that I've read for the last 20 months of the pandemic, the numbers do not lie, right? And yeah. the problem is people have been getting the jab. You can get the jab, I don't care. But that is not going to prepare you for what is coming up later on. And to, a matter of fact, if you want to talk about the elite group, they're the ones that have been exempt from getting the vaccination. All the elite leaders have been exempt from getting the jab. I wonder why. Yeah. Um, not, yeah, I heard Biden. Not, Biden has an exemption list too, I hear. I don't know for sure. Yeah. And... It's not just the elite leaders. We're saying all the big multi-million dollar companies out there that also have been exempt from the yeah. from the injection of the vaccine. Yeah, I'm so, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the the guys with the private jets that don't even have to go through immigrations or customs. Uh, I bet you they don't have to get the job either. Well, they will eventually, but right now they've been exempt. Right now, yeah. as we speak. But they say, I'm talking about the CEOs, the bosses, not the employees that work for them. I'm talking about the bosses, that, the CEOs, the high rank personnel. They've been in them. Yeah. Why do you think? Why do you think they are pushing the advertisement that you need to get a vaccine? You yeah. need to get the vaccine passport if you want to travel on this airline. That's we'll right. That's you, right. We'll, we'll give you free airline tickets. We'll put you into a lottery draw to win prizes and blah. It's yeah, a propaganda bullshit. This is the stuff, Jamie. This is the stuff of uh, science fiction. Because what we're going to probably see, and I, I'm, we could we could look at we could look look at this conversation like five years down the road and uh, compare notes and see if I was right on about this or not. But what we're probably going to see is that the generic stuff, people are going to have to get the job like every like six months or every, there's going to be a frequency, a duration that they're going to have to get this vaccination just to stay alive, just to keep their immune system high enough uh, to, to be able to combat just even just walking outside. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. And then, the rich will have the one that oh you only have to take this every year you know and then and then you'll have as you go up in levels it'll be like one guy doesn't need to take it at all you know what I mean and then like that's the other extreme at the top so I mean you'll probably see this gradation like you know or you know you know the, you, you lose your job at like you know at, at the uh, you know your government job or whatever and then suddenly you get your vaccination they switch them on you and now you got the now now you got the poor person one you know what I mean because <laughs> you didn't do this or that they'll start using it as leverage especially uh, to those that are in the know that's how they're gonna cut that's how they're gonna keep their own staff compliant I'm pretty sure. Well, that's the thing. If they can't get you in one way, they'll get you in another way. And they'll That's try right. everything in their power to manipulate you, 
And yeah. I've just gone to say this with encouragement. Do not be manipulated by the crony crook that they are. No. They know they're breaking the law. They know that they're breaking every single book of the Constitution law. The mandates yeah. are not law. Right? No. Policies are not law. Mandates are not law. Um, even... Even uh, statutory laws aren't law. They're only laws in statutory court. You guys got to remember that uh, the uh, the human given rights, like your birth your birth given rights, are basically uh, they're immutable. Like they, they they take priority and precedence over any other law. So I mean, I know it's difficult to enforce that because uh, by doing so, you actually. Uh, you, you, by enforcing that, you pretty much uh, you, you give up those rights. Um, so you kind of have to take everything uh, one step at a time. And I know if you have a gun uh, waving in your face, or like we were talking the other night, if someone shoots you in the face with a rubber bullet, I know it's kind of hard to go start talking about constitutional rights when you're getting a beat down. Um, but on the other note, um, yeah, it's a tough it's a tough pill to swallow either way. Well, that's the thing. Um, oh. I'm not here to say whether you should get the back end or not. That is your time. Yeah. Right? But at the same token, I don't want to be forced down the rabbit hole of saying you have to be forced to the back end just to save your own family. That's not, that's not in my DNA. Yeah. No one will force anything upon me just so I can save my own family. And many people are in the same boat. When, they're, when they've got to go and see a funeral of their lying family member, the, the dying family member, right, they need to show a paperwork that they've been tested negatively for COVID. They've got to show a paperwork saying that they've been vaccinated. Then they've got to get on an app on a, on a cell phone to have a vaccine passport put on. Yeah. Now, we... Going through the, I want to go through this one with you, Rob. Um, sure. You and I have already said this, but let's go to the Biosecurity Act, no, not the Bio. Let's go to the Commonwealth Privacy Act of 1988. This is Section 94. I hate this is Australian Biosecurity Act, but we'll go to the Canadian one and New Zealand, whatever. But this is um, 1988. Canada came out with their um, Privacy Act in 1987. But here it is. This is what the Commonwealth Privacy Act of 1998, Section 94H says. No one can force you to provide medical information, including evidence of face mask exemption. It is illegal. No one, no one can lawfully track your movements or ask for your permission, right, or personal details. That includes signing into cafes, supermarkets, shopping centres, etc. Not even the federal or state government it is illegal. You cannot refuse service to an individual if your business is open to the public. It's illegal. If that's the if that's the Privacy Act, right? And the main one is no one can lawfully track your movements, or no one can force you to provide medical information then that vaccine passport that everyone's trying to put on their app is invalid. Are you there, Rob? Uh-oh. I think Rob had dropped out. Um, Rob, I've got no volume from you and I've got no video from you. Can you... Put it, um, can you have OK on Twitch that if you can still hear me, guys? If you can still hear me. Can you put a thumbs up in the chat room if you can still hear me, guys? Um, Sorry, I just uh, stepped that? out for a second. <laughs> I don't think there's any volume coming through on Twitch now. Sorry, I just uh, sat down for a second. Uh, you guys should, hear me, guys? should be able to hear him. 
I don't think there's any volume coming through on Twitch now. Sure. Yeah, I've got volume. I've got volume. But I've got not I've got none from you though. Oh, I I just stepped out for a brief second. Here we go. I've got volume for you, but I've got no video for you. Oh yeah, no, I just I didn't want people to see me leave the room. I just thought I'd <laughs> ask for forgiveness, not permission. But uh Well it's not getting too controversial. It's all good. Here we go. We got the screen back. And welcome back to the show, Rob. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. No, yeah, I was, well, I was, but anyway, I was doing the pee um, dance sitting down. <laughs> so, Rob, I'm talking about the Privacy Act of 1988. If if they can't force you to provide medical information, or they cannot lawfully track your movement, then why is the vaccine passport being pumped out? It's a medical information. Yeah, why I think I think I think what it is though is that there there there's going to be. A little bit as you move out of jurisdiction, uh, like when you leave the border, um, you're no longer uh, you're no, your rights kind of get altered because now now you're out of jurisdiction. I think it basically it f falls under maritime law, and um, when you're in that kind of I call it a state of limbo <laughs> because like when they don't let you into a country, let's say like when I was uh, uh, basically taken i was treated like a, a prisoner like it was bizarre it was really really freakish but anyway the, the point is is that they you're you're, you're you kind of don't have any rights you know like if they're if you're in their custody you don't have any rights if you're uh, a sole citizen as uh as a married like under the maritime law jurisdiction if you're asking for entry to a port, like you have to follow whatever, you know, whatever, you know, prerequisites are required or whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's weird. They can do just pretty much anything they want with you. And I think that's where, that's where they can kind of bend the rules or like with that loophole, like they can deny you to leave the country unless you jump through their fucking hoops, basically, you know? And, well, um, well, see, this is where I want to stand firm on. Um, unless this does not, it does. It does make a standpoint, but my Commonwealth Privacy Act states this, and this is what I stand on, the principles of what's right and wrong. This is what it is. This is my principles that I stand on. No one can force you to provide medical information. That means medical information right now means whether you've been vaccinated or not. That's a medical well, that's, information. Well, that's, that, that's what that translates into now for sure. Um, but I mean, it, 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 it also correlates a bit with, uh, like in the States, it's, uh, the fourth amendment where like, if you don't have to provide, like, unless, uh, the police or the authorities, uh, like, unless they have like, uh, like a logical suspicion of a crime being committed, you, you don't have to surrender your identification, like under any circumstance, like, like, it, you know what I mean? If there's not a crime being committed then you don't have to submit that information and that's a violation of the fourth amendment basically if they try to you know uh for uh try to force you to do that and that's yeah that's a big and no but a lot of people don't realize that right because like and like even security guards they'll they'll try to enforce like no cameras and that's a violation of the first amendment right which is freedom of press and i think every every commonwealth country has a form of that law like it's uh or a, sorry a form of that uh um uh constitutional law sorry well the, the other point here is that no one can lawfully track your movement we've been tracked all the time with our smartphones and god knows what else to look on google right i found yeah. this out see that means de deliberate track targeted tracking has probably got a different definition i would say under those terms and uh and I was going to say, by the way, um, the schedule, I had a little think about this and, um, I'm pretty certain that the schedule they're referring to is that uh, it would be each country's responsibility to basically create these social programs to facilitate, um, that would, uh, uh, also carry out legislations and bills that would also facilitate these, uh, that would govern, uh, the businesses that would govern, uh, the ta tax paying consumers, uh, the educational programs that would facilitate future development that would, uh, foster and nurture these things. I think that is what the schedule refers to. Um, I could be wrong, but, uh, my put, I'm putting my bet and money on that. 
Well, here's a question for you. Sure. If they can if the government cannot lawfully track your movement, then why do they put out facial recognition? Well, here's the thing, right? Is that facial recognition, think of it this way, um, especially the listeners. Like, I don't, I don't personally look at a technology and say it's a bad thing. It's how it's used, right? So um, this is why I think it's been a big deal in many countries in the last 10 years where they've, decided to upscale and uh, upgrade their their laws to include all this new technology and it was all very private because um uh we didn't have like we weren't taking pictures of what we had for breakfast you know uh that day you know back 20 years ago that just wasn't it wasn't the thing right but um now that we are see what they can do it because people give up their information for free. Like they, they, nobody has to track anybody because everybody is already giving up all their information, like willy nilly. Like it's happening with the, especially with uh, the kids and like these these really fast media, social media outlets like, uh, um, you know, Instagram and uh, like all these like really fast pace like you know 15 second video clips and shit like that like i mean by doing this stuff and the videos are coming out like the data being generated is insane like it's it's all metadata that deals with everything from your your geolocation what you're doing your mood the per, the, par, the products you purchase the people you're hanging out with because your phones are pinging other people's phones as well so like they're having that's how they can do the 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 um contact tracing and guess what if you've had an android update in the last two years guess what you have contact tra tracing software and it does report it back to uh to the to the service provider which gets pipelined to another database somewhere who knows where the fuck that goes um uh and that's all in the uh that's all in the uh um what do you call it the uh fine print that nobody reads you know the you the, yeah. the, the eula <laughs> but uh i digress um yeah the tracking it happens um innately anyway um the tracking when i think what they're referring to is literally the direct the direct unauthorized tracking of an individual um is yeah that's what they're talking about they're not talking about like you know all, all like some some creepo just going going through like your entire facebook thing with a with a password because uh facebook is authorizing you know the authorities to to do that so yeah yeah we'll give you a, a system operator password yeah you just they just go and yeah. look at whatever the fuck they want you know um and that's what we don't do, by the way, at EPGN. Yeah. Our server's located in Iceland. It's a fucking fortress, politically speaking, and uh, all your shit's safe there. Besides, I don't want your fucking information anyway. I got enough to deal with. But uh, I digress. Yeah, go on. Let's go back to the Biosecurity Act of 2015 for Australia. Um, this happened around the time when the TPP happened. But right. This, this is a this is a very vital point that I want to make, and I've been getting a lot of questions about this because I've I've been stating this point. And this is the point: the Biosecurity Act of two thousand and fifteen is a federal legislation and supersedes all state law, including any state of emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I see. But here's the thing about the state of emergency. It's deferred to uh, FEMA and uh, the United Nations. And like, because uh, I think Australia is one of the people that signed it. Uh, well, the, the United States is pretty much emerged from there. Let's just be fair. Um, Canada's uh, gone on board with this. Britain's on board with this. Uh, there's a, many countries that are on board with this that signed over. Now, I don't think all of the states have. I think uh, the states themselves, like individually, um, were able to basically they they had the final say on whether or not they would take the the FEMA but i think about half of the states actually authorized FEMA to take control in a, under a state of emergency and uh many have gone along with it uh, across the planet it's insane but i i they would they would basically use force and like even though i know you're quoting i know you're quoting 
uh, the protective acts. The thing is, is that nobody be enforcing them, and that's the fucking problem. This is why we needed militias in the first place. Uh, this is why we needed, you know, in the states they had the uh, the Second Amendment, and that was to basically stop, the, you know, a tyrannical government. And unfortunately, I don't think there's much of a match for it right now. Well, see, the second point that that um that is under the Biosecurity Act of 2015 states this: um, an individual cannot be forced to wear a mask, be forced to social distance, be forced to contract trace, be detained, isolated, tested, vaccinated, medically treated, or searched in the absence of a biosecurity control order. No state or federal policy can require you to do any of those things. These yeah. things are illegal. So basically, well, when you look at the, yeah, when you look at the states of America, their state law overrides the federal law. That's right. But to see, here's the thing: is that only time the heads are going to roll is if somebody in the government is going to enforce that act. So, like. I think what's happening is that the people at the top in, in Australia are hoping that they keep things under an iron fist. Because once they pass, once they pass the threshold, like they got to, they got to stick with the with the plan. If they don't stick with the plan, then they know their heads are going to roll. Because what's going to happen is there's going to be a shift. There's going to be a shift in the government, and uh, they're going to be held accountable for it. And that's the last thing they're going to want is to be held accountable for um, basically. The dehumanizing and beating the living crap out of many people's uh, physically and also emotionally, mentally, and uh, like I said, it all goes back to the kids, man. Like the kids are going to be the ones who uh, are going to learn from this, and right now they're learning a twisted, twisted worldview. Yeah, because this is why people are asking questions, and thanks to all the questions that I've been receiving over the last week and a bit about the Biosecurity Act, um, the, the Privacy Act, we're going to look a little bit further, like the Disability and Discrimination Act as well. We're going to look more into all these acts because why are the government allowing the police to be militarised, especially in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, the government, the state government, have been using powers to manipulate the public, and not only that, they are militarising the police. So, if you have a political standpoint against forced vaccination, mask wearing, or whatever, you're getting rounded up by the police, which is against the Biosecurity Act. That you can't be detained. According to the Biosecurity Act, you are not supposed to be detained. Why are the police detaining people when the Biosecurity Act says that you can't? What other act that been automatically made up to override the Biosecurity Act of 2015? Yeah. What act? Did we, we need to find out because it's a fucking awesome question, man. And you know that should make fucking everybody fucking boil in their blood. Like they should just like be freaking out. Um, it, it's a travesty. Even if you're not from Australia, I mean. Uh, you should be vocalizing about this kind of shit. I, I mean, their government needs to hear it th from the outside. Like, I mean, they're, they're, they don't live, uh, they don't live in a, in a bubble, you know? If they did, we wouldn't be able to talk to Jamie here. Like, it's not, it's not China, <laughs> but I mean, it's very close because I, I bet you, I bet you China's got a lot to do with this, actually. I, I have a very, very large suspicion that, um, uh, more, more to what I was just talking about with, uh, uh, the this shift in government, I think a lot of it has a, a Chinese element to it. Um, now, like I said, this is uh, my theory, but I think what's happening is definitely there's 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 a there's a coup happening in a lot of the Commonwealth. I think there's something happening and taking place. I think Biden leaving, uh, uh, what happened there with with the troops in, in Afghanistan. I, I I think a lot of this is uh is related i think a big power play has been made somehow uh something behind the scenes that we don't see you know it's like, it's like blade you know uh, the the movie you know, the vampire underworld i think something's happening in there yeah 
And I just want to say we are on YouTube. Um, I just we've been on YouTube for fifty minutes as well, so YouTube is working fine. Oh, it did well. catch it, eh? It finally caught it. That's good. Okay. Ah, uh, I'm happy for that. Um, I gotta check BeerTube now, see if that one picked up. Because what I did is I actually I didn't stop the stream. I changed the uh, the the settings in the config file, and then I reloaded it, which doesn't kill the server and then restart it. It just kind of reloads the settings and leaves anything connected still going. So I worked. I fucking yay! A technical test achievement. Yes, yes. <laughs> so um, yeah. Oh, you just dropped them. You just dropped out. Oh, no, no, you're not talking. That's good. Um, I just want to say, um, Centris, uh, that is true. Quite a few of the police in Melbourne are not from Australia. They are private police. That's why they act that way they do. Well, we need to hold them, we need to hold them accountable. And there's it's another private- thing. There's another thing, too, to that, what she was just talking about. There's a good possibility that none of those people are actually um, – uh, government hires like they might actually be uh paramilitary not military but uh like uh uh what do you call it uh, uh private security like these private security forces are hired all over the world to do certain things and uh they because they because they're corporations and not government entities they don't have to answer to certain things because they're they're basically held inaccountable due to corporate secrecy and uh, corporate secrecy is just like a human privacy act or a human privacy law it protects the corporation in the same manner so it's uh it's a gray area when it comes to these international uh, companies that do security that's like blackwater you know they got caught doing things in iraq and what have you um there's uh you know, a lot of a lot of information you could Google on that or or Duck Duck Go, whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, it could it could be private security. Um, it could very well be. Um, I'm not saying it is, of course. Uh, we had an event in Canada where there was a shooting at the Parliament Building. Somebody went cray uh, cray, and uh, he was taken out by a a 20 year veteran or something. He, he, uh, some guy who's never seen combat. Uh, he, he was a chief of police or something, but he never actually fired his, his, his weapon in his life. And he did like a matrix jumping style thing. And he shot the guy six times and there was bullet holes in the walls. It was dramatic. I don't think any of that happened. We actually debunked it. The bullets, the bullet holes in the walls were from a shelf. <laughs> they were, they're just bolt holes. But anyway, I, I digress. Um, they do this all the time though. That's true. Because, um, guys, to move forward on from here, um, we are going to um, bring you the shows and go go through all the acts. EPGN Radio Online is the place to go. Um, Rob, you want to talk more more about the the service and where people can get this information? Absolutely. Um, well, we got a little community. We're gonna we're trying to start build over at uh, uh, epgn.ch and also radio.epgn.ch, which are the uh, that's a sister site uh, where we have a radio broadcast twenty four seven. Um, right now, it's just playing a lot of music from the uh, Free Music Archives, which uh, I've found that there's actually quite a lot of decent stuff. There's a lot of crap and shite but there's a lot of good stuff too anyway uh i'm just playing a selection from there because i don't want to get into the commercial music but we're going to be filling up the schedule with uh talk shows podcasts and right now you'll hear a lot of sean mcguire on there because i got six years of his shows uh on backlog and he's also on every wednesday uh at one o'clock pacific time four o'clock eastern and nine o'clock if you're in ireland and the G, I think that's GMT or UMT or whatever. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know. I can't remember. I'm not looking at it. But uh, point is, is yeah, you can uh, basically do whatever you want uh, over at epgn.ch. There is uh, the, the radio feed. There's a live feed as well for what we're doing right here, right now. And uh, there's forums. Uh, you can start up conversations and uh, all kinds of good stuff with other people and talk about these things. And I will have an integrated chat as well. As well, it'll uh, it'll be uh, pro- probably a couple of weeks before I have that properly set in place. But uh, but well, we're moving along rather quickly with the development. I'm just one guy, so if you happen to be a coder and you want to uh, you want to help out, I'm also uh, I'm taking on helpers. If anybody wants to do uh, moderation, I'm taking on moderators what we're trying to do is build a community and uh 
start to start voicing ourselves i i want people to start just you know self-publishing start doing their own things out there i'll be teaching people how to set up these services uh so you could do it yourself as well and connect we can connect as a decentralized platform of our own we don't need google we don't need twitch we don't need any of these other companies really to uh to be be there as a liability telling us what we can and can't do when we start doing what they don't like and that's that simple you know if you want freedom you have to get it yourself and uh that's what uh that's that's what i'm inviting that's what i'm looking at uh, accomplishing with all of this and uh yeah, it's one year, uh, uh, almost a year to the day, to be honest with you, when I quit my job last year and just said, screw this, I'm going to be uh, 47. And I'm thinking, if I just keep waiting one more year, one more year with the job, I'm never going to get this thing going. I'm, you know, here I am. I'm doing it now. So, hey, come on out. We'll see what we can build together. You know what I mean? Well, since I've known you, man, we've, we've done a lot of shows together and starting the ball rolling. There's a lot of work going behind the scenes in this as well. I've been getting stuff on my end, working, and you've been working around the clock almost to yeah. get this working the way it is right now. Like I said, you've got to teach me the ropes a little bit because uh, um, this is one of my passions too. And we're going to get Bill on in this week sometime we are going to get him on here to, to try it out yeah. maybe he, it needs to be a little bit earlier than Bill uh, for Bill because of his time restrictions and we're also going to get Eric on here probably later as well so but the thing is I've got my hand up and you know we've got to get a few things yeah. happening on the end to yeah. get this but guys there will be a weekly show Yeah, no, we're not we're not going to go every, anywhere. We, there's still going to be a weekly show. It's still going to come live on Twitch and YouTube. You guys will be seeing it. Yeah. And we'll, we'll be announcing know, the the first the first actual real show on EPGN. We'll be we'll be we'll be announcing it. We'll have. A, I'm going to try and get all of the all of the benefactors here uh, to be right here. All of the people that are. A part of this i'm going to try to get them in all at one time and uh make it a make it a grand event we'll have music and everything and uh you know yeah really just kind of just go off and it'll be a be a pretty slamming show i guess i hope so anyway <laughs> and there will be opportunities where you can actually join in on the panel too there will be special um times and days or nights where you, the audience, can participate on the panel as well. So there will be shows like that as well. So yeah. all... And I got to actually, I do have a show I'm bringing back. Uh, if any of you have listened to me in the past, uh, in uh, back in uh, 2015, 2014 era, uh, we had a show called Rapid Fire Free For All. It is coming back. And that's where we yeah. get uh, we get somebody on. And you got a couple of minutes to uh, convince us to keep you on. If not, if you if you bore the shit out of us, you're gone. But uh, it's a rapid fire free for all. We bring people in to just kind of say their bit and uh, and uh, just have fun with it. It's, uh, it's not it's not to uh, it's not to, to to shut people down or nothing. It's just uh, it's all yeah. in good it's all in good fun. Yeah, and I want to say this for the YouTube listeners that listen to me, you know. We're not going to, well, I, I for one, is not going to be putting up with your BS because I know a lot of you on YouTube, man, hate my guts. And I don't care about it. But the point of the matter is, this is an online radio show, and the last thing I want is your BS all over the, the freaking YouTube channel in the chat room. You either watch it or you don't watch it. If you want to participate, be logical about it and be sensible about it. That's right. right. The last thing I want is you numbwits to just plant your baggage all over in the chat room. Yeah. So that, that's only for the YouTube followers. And, um, uh, and when we <clears> – sorry, I didn't mean to cough in your ear there. I was just going to say we need moderators, and eventually we'll have we'll we'll have a centralized chat system that we can use, 
on the EPGN website as well. And uh, like yeah. I was saying before, we'll have, uh, hopefully I'm going to have some bots that will actually send messages out to to the other chat networks as well, like to the Twitch chat and to the, you know, to, to, to uh, if you're on Discord, I, I also have a Discord page as well, which I'm going to integrate. Yeah. So it'll all be kind of unified in, in, in a sense. So you will, you know, if you're comfortable with YouTube, you can stay with YouTube. That's fine. If you're comfortable with uh, a Discord or, or Skype, uh, or not Skype, sorry, uh, whatever the other ones are, <laughs> uh, Twitch and stuff. But anyway, point is, is uh, you'll have you'll have access to what to the same conversation. But if you're here to cause shit, well, hopefully we have moderators that'll take you out because uh, we won't have time for that. You know, there's two rules, two rules, man, at EPG. You don't piss on a rug and you don't shit in the pool. <laughs> yeah. See, uh, the people on Twitch, you guys had wealth of me with so much gratitude. And you guys are legends on Twitch. Centris, Zodikin, everybody that followed, you guys are bloody legends. Yeah, you guys are um, much friendlier. Yeah, I agree. Cash that lives up in Port Hedley, Western Australia. You guys are bloody legends. I want to say this too. I'm getting people from Ireland, Peru, uh, Spain, South Africa, Canada, all around the place are tuning in to Southern Crew 79. Like I said, yeah. this is not about me. I'm only well, really just trying to share the news out for you. You guys are the crowd. Uh, yeah. You're the reason you we do this. Have information haven't. This is how we relate. If you've got information, please give it to me that I haven't got, and we go through. You are part of the show, audience. You are part of the show. So that's right. And I am working on a hotline. I'm working on a hotline for the website so that uh, anybody can report on something. And uh, if there's something happening, I'll have it set up so you, you can set a video clip. You could uh, say your piece, uh, audio clip, whatever the case may be. Uh, there'll be a hotline that you can uh, send information to as well. So we might get wrapped up here, bro. Um, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, we, you know what? We, we did it. We did a good number there and uh, we tested out the system. I, I'd say we had about an 85% uh, success rate uh, compared to last night. It would be like 120%, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys for listening. If anyone's listening, I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, this is just a beta test. Uh, we'll probably do another run like this, uh, kind of from the shooting from the hip. But as it goes, it's going to get a little bit more finely tuned. It's going to become a... a a better tuned machine and uh we're going to be reaching more networks as well i'm going to be activating uh uh this rtmp restreamer and uh sending streams off to many more platforms so we can get a bigger audience and uh well man that's all we can do man we got to be the mighty amoeba and just be the biggest one <laughs> but yeah but it, Dodie can said this Dodie can said this in the chat room on twitch Need to build the numbers. Everyone needs to tell one other person about what we're doing. And yeah, yeah, man, go out, that's the spirit. Go out, share this out on all your social media platforms. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Go out and share this. Get them over to Southern Crew Seventy Nine on Twitch. Go to EPGN underscore Media on Twitch. Follow that. Also, hit us up. If we'll be here. Every week, there'll be four, four to five shows a week. Depends on the the situations and that. There could be special episodes and whatnot, like the protest I did last week, and that was a special episode. But normally, I I like to stick it around about four to five shows a week. Well, if I'm with Rob, I'm doing a double header. I'll do my normal show during the day, and then we're testing this radio online thing with you guys later on. Yeah. That evening. This and, uh, is a double header. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, good for you, man. You just you, you kept up the pace. It's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, I, I'm a fan. I uh, I will also add to this, by the way, is that uh, I'll uh, I'm still working on building a studio, but to the left of me over here is is this little area, which is going to be my uh, little news desk, and I'm I'm setting up. I got my teleprompter. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's not turned in the distance right over there in the background there's my teleprompter 
uh, to do uh, to do scripted stuff and commercials and what have you. So we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be amping it up. I gotta get the hell out of the development phase, which is just writing code, which is boring as shit. And uh, I've been doing it for like ten months. I can't wait to get into producing and doing fun stuff and doing commercials and videos and uh, a lot of stuff is coming down the pike and uh, doing all for you guys. I mean, uh, if there's anything you need, anything you want, that want to see, you want to report it on. If you want to know how to do this stuff, uh, I'm working. I'm going to be working on tutorials. You tell me what you want and uh, it'll happen eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to sign off, um, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for um People on YouTube, you know, thank you too. And that, but um, we'll be back tomorrow for a show, roughly about 10 p.m. Eastern for the American and Canadian listeners, and it's around about 11:30 Central Time in the morning for me. Rob, thank you. Dave Wishes will will we'll sign off properly. But to all and everybody else, you guys are bloody legend. Tomorrow. I call it the Wacky Wednesday, even though it's Thursday in Australia, but I want to name my show to correspond with the Northern Hemisphere, of like Canada and America. So tomorrow is Wacky Wednesday. Go through all the news that Wednesday has brought us. So, Rob, yeah. Take hey, it away. man. You're, hey, you're welcome, and thank you for being here. Uh, I loved your input, and uh, thank you to everybody out there for listening. Uh, you guys were awesome. I'm uh, I'm signing out, and uh, it was a good run. Now I get to read log files and see what I did wrong with the other stuff, but uh, I digress, guys. You guys, you guys rock, okay? Uh, we'll see you next time. As soon as I find the stop button, bam, there it is. Yeah.